of the 2021 
We use this moment of silent prayer to reflect on all the issues that have been happening for the past year, all our people that succumbed to different, uh, like the COVID-19 pandemic and different happenings, but also we are thinking of our, our colleagues and, and people of our province that we need to remember as we are continuing to build in a national democratic society. With that all said, I would love now to give over to Atman to, to play the national anthem whilst we are still standing. Over to you, Atman. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. you may be seated. Let me just uh, actually express our appreciation for all of you that went to the trouble to be here today. I am really elated and very excited that I can see the women of this province is very much interested on the issues that is actually about themselves. I always say we as women must make sure that there is nothing about us without us. And today we have shown once again, is it Bokone, Bopirima, our province. You know that I'm deployed to Northwest politically. My constituency is in Lekwatimana and I'm working in this province. Even in the Northern Cape when they want to deploy me, I said, I'm from Northwest. You don't deploy me anyway. So we will continue with the program and we will now call on our deputy speaker, the Honorable Mutsumi, our young lion, to do the opening and welcoming remarks. Over to you, deputy speaker. No, thank you very much, um, Deputy Chair of the NCOP, uh, Mewarona Honorable Lucas, uh, the Acting Premier of the Northwest Province, Honorable Lena Micha, members of the executive present here today, Honorable members, all the executive mayors and mayors, speakers and councillors, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to address you in this important session for the report back on the Women's Charter Development convened by Parliament. I address you on behalf 
of the speaker, Honorable Basisana Suzanne Dainchi, who could not make it for this event due to other official engagements that are running concurrently with this program. My name is Honorable Ntetsao Viola Mutumi, the Deputy Speaker of the Provincial Legislature. As the Northwest Provincial Legislature, Honorable Members, we welcome this program and wish to indicate our commitment and support for initiatives that aim at empowering women. Our constitutional mandate, I believe that everybody present here today, he or she is aware that our mandate as the provincial legislature basically is to make laws, ensure public involvement and perform oversight over the executive and other state organs. So according to the program, the provincial government of the Northwest will give an account of the progress made since our last engagement. Honorable members, the conditions that women are subjected to on daily basis require that we must triple our efforts when dealing with gender-based violence. I believe that uh, during COVID-19 lock, hard lockdown, we've realized and we've picked up that indeed gender-based violence is one of the pandemic that as women are confronted with. The report of the last engagement indicates that we show that women are still victims of unemployment, inequality, and poverty. In our engagement, it will be important for government to reflect on how far we have gone as a province in our, in our attempt to get women to participate in the mainstream of our economy. Women's equity and equality in different workplaces must be realized in lifetime. We cannot rest when senior management is still dominated by men with very few, if not no representation of women. And honorable uh, deputy chair, uh, my statement must not be confused as if I'm, a, I'm, I'm sexist or whatsoever, but is the reality that we are confronted with and we must not be apologetic about raising it. The government at all levels must have clear women empowerment plan. Well, women continue to struggle with these challenges, COVID-19 has also caused serious devastation in the life of many South Africa. This is an additional burden on women that are already facing a wide range of challenges. As the legislature, we will continue to create platforms for the members to engage and communicate their expectations from the government. The platforms must make a difference in many South African women that seem to lose hope. The statistics of gender-based violence in South Africa is shocking, honorable members. President Ramaphosa at one stage when addressing our challenge said, violence against women has become more than a national crisis. Therefore, women that are here today expect our government to, go, to give hope and protection. As we welcome parliament back in the Northwest province, Bukoni Pirima, we appreciate your commitment to follow up on the issues raised by the people. And we are hopeful that this will go a long way in, in breaking barriers for women empowerment. We must continue, honorable members, to hold those responsible to implement resolutions taken in this forum accountable at all times. And I'm happy that uh, MECs are present in this part particular platform. One of the societal challenges is that people in power have forgotten that to serve in honor and we must always give our best without fail nor expect anything to return. Former President Nelson Mandela once said, Honorable Deputy Chair and Honorable Members present here today, there can be no greater gift than that of giving one's time and energy to help others without expecting anything in return. Our society needs us and we must avail our services and serve our nation. Together we can create better communities for the Northwest province and our nation. Let's continue with our hard work and challenge lives for our people. And also deputy chair, let me capitalize on this platform by appreciating the premier, the current sitting premier for showing its feet that for this particular session, Honorable Micha, I would sing a Murita Kunzaha, as Ole Mosadi Waletlapa, 
in this particular platform ba bone gore re le basadi re na le bokgone ba gore re ka tsa province ya rona raisa kopedi honorable members ncop you are welcome in the northwest province and we hope that we will have a productive engagement in that note kare malibongwe thank you very much Malibongwe. To the MECs present, the Deputy Speaker of the Northwest Provincial Legislature, MECs present, as well as Honorable Micha, that will be acting for the Premier today, members of the Legislature, Honorable Bartlett, member of the NCOP that is with us here, our district and local mayors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Now, my, mine is very easy. Unfortunately, I will be doing it in English because you have neglected to teach me further Twana, besides all the swear words that you told me before, like Nikwe, she has taught me that once. So this session, I think I must just simplify it. For 18 months, and many women of the Northwest have participated in that process. We've been going around the country and we have taken the 1994 Women's Charter and did a review of that Women's Charter. Now today, as we are meeting, this is actually a report back session. You have spoken as the woman of the country. We are bringing your representatives back to you to report back on what progress have been made after we have listened to the issues of women. Now, as we are meeting here, just this week, as the National Council of Provinces, we have adopted the Division of Revenue Bill. That bill provides for the determination of each province share of the revenue and of the budget, as we usually see, and for any other allocation to provinces, to local government and municipalities from the national government share of the revenue. So this bill, is the most comprehensive statement of government social and economic plans and priorities. Interacting the flow and the use of financial resources, gender responsive budgeting can determine how public funds are raised, how they are used, and who benefits from them. Just this morning, we had a discussion with the MECs, and I was saying, sometimes the issue of gender-based budgeting is being misunderstood. Because now we are experiencing an issue of water. Who is the ones that are suffering the most under the lack of water? And why am I saying that? I, I'm not making politics. I'm making a, a, a very practical example of why it is important that our budget should be gender blind. It should actually address the correct issues. If you speak, about the gender budget that address issues of everyone. It should address the correct issues. And if we have a lack of basic services, the ones that will suffer the most is the women and the children. And why is women suffering? I don't, I, I'm someone that forget all the big English that is there. And I speak about the things that is practical for me. And why is, is, is women suffering the most? I was just making them a very simple example. In the past, not now anymore, because now I'm big. But when I was still young, when I get home, I must start cooking. I must do the washing. I must also tend to my children. To my, that, that's when I started, I had one baby. After four years, I had two babies. I must also tend to my children. How do I do all these things if I don't have the basic needs like water? like all of what you ever need, because you can start nothing without water. The children is dirty, they have been playing, they must bath, isn't it? We must wash the, do the washing, we must use water to cook, because rice, you cannot cook without water, isn't it? 
Musha, you cannot cook without water, isn't it? Unless there is someone that can tell me you can fry Musha, then I will do. <laughs> so that is why as parliament, we have decided to review the Women's Charter. Now, when we reviewed this Women's Charter, we wanted to see the women in 1994, before them in 1954, but the ones in 1994, they put down 12 articles and they said, this is the basic agenda that we want to be responded to, at least to make sure that women is bringing into the mainstream. So when we, 25 years later, we said, let us listen, what have changed? What have happened for the women of South Africa? Now we found very good things, but also a lot of negative things. And we, are see, we have said to, we had high level discussions with executives of the different provinces and we gave your report to them. We said to them, this is what the women of Northwest have said. What are your commitment, MEC? I believe I was not there. the day of Northwest high level. I think it was the day that I had COVID. So I was not necessarily part of that process, but they will respond today. So after we have, in fact, we did a review of the entire women's rights regimes. We brought in the legislation that is existing and we saw how it benefited women and what needs to be changed in that legislation. We did that. We brought in professors from the is it, uh, Health Research Council, or what is it, Cebu? Cebu, the one that gave us the, the information on femicide. Is it South African Health Science Council? Health Science Council. We brought in them to understand what is the causes of femicide, where so many women are killed, who are killing them, what is it? We did an entire review. We brought in the, uh, the, the, the judicial, uh, what is this? Say we come, the ones that work with the, with the justice judge, that, that ex, Professor Domingo Dem, what is it? The Law Reform Commission. Because I'm on the Judicial Services Council, I become a bit confused. We brought in the Law Reform Commission. We asked them what kind of legislation is there that is benefiting our woman? And what is it that is still impeding? Because we, when we listened to the woman, many women came and said, I have married under this uh, customary law regime. But my husband is taking another woman without consulting me, bringing her into my house. My husband has left the house. I don't know where to go to be able for him to just support me with my children because of this customary law regime. That is the kind of things that we did. I think I, I need to give you a broader perspective than just to say we did a review, but that is what we did. We went into that and we realized, and we went back. I don't know whether you have seen how many laws have been amended in this period on the gender-based violence things, because the women of South Africa spoke about the fact that their children can get raped and there is no law that describes who is a child, particularly when it comes to people with disabilities that are mentally impaired and so on. So all of those things, that, what, that came from the women of South Africa in the process that we did. And we went back. I, I personally reported on the issue of the customary law in the ANC National Executive Committee. And the president said he's taking it upon him to make sure that there is a review of the whole marriage regime. Today, uh, Mutsaledi, I'm looking for the, for the minister's name. He's coming with a new, he's coming with new laws on the marriage regime. Because Muslim women, we had to review that, that legislation. Because they are, I think in many instances, worse, worse than us. Because in us, there is this thing of family involved in marriages, even if it's customary of what or what. But Muslim men can just decide they don't want this woman anymore and they don't know what they do. There was just no protection for them. If you look, if you read, and if you watch, you will see that things have been amended because the women of South Africa spoke through our processes. So I, I forgive me, I'm not using your speech, 
I'm using the real story that we are having. So in many instances, people are being put in positions and they are said they are gender focal persons or they are managers of gender and what, but they don't understand what it is that they must do. And they don't want to think outside of the box because for us as parliament, it was important to go out and to consult the women of South Africa so that we can also have a better understanding. And if we engage in our oversight and accountability process, the executive, we can tell them, but that is what the women of the country is saying. And that is, and it helped us so much. People are taking us very serious because of you. Just give yourself a round of applause for that. Now, the problem is that our systems is not in place and our planning is not proper. And that is what we wanted to happen so that we can't have this, this poor coordination of programs where people don't speak together on the same issue. Because if we speak together on the same issue, we will have to have a very good outcome, is it not? We will have to have a very good outcome. And that is why I'm saying, today we are having this women's charter that we term the women's charter for accelerated development, the one that you have in your hands today. We, together with the women of South Africa, we develop that document by, and by engaging you, by getting your inputs, by making sure that we respond to the issues of the women. So today we could put a demand document on the table. That document is a document of demands. If you have time, read some of the things. I was just saying to the MECs, even myself, I won't sit down and read that thing like a Roman, a Roman's book or a, a literature or what. But there is a lot of things. When I go into the, 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 the index, there is a lot of things that I see that I'm interested in. And I go to that page, I read that thing, ask them. Sometimes I say, don't develop a speech for me because I will use the information that we have. And we do it. The other day we are having a, a debate with the president on gender-based violence. I, I, I developed my own speech in Africans because they can't speak Africans. I developed my own speech in Africans, but I use the information that we got from the women of South Africa. I see that I so quiet, but I could make quite how, but I could because I was carrying your mandate, isn't it? I was carrying your mandate. So honorable deputy speaker, members of the executive, as parliament, as we are doing this, what we are doing is a sustained and a targeted oversight and accountability campaign. We want to make sure that the women's charter of 2021 is being implemented through a report back session as the one that we are having now, so that we can hear, and you will tell us, yes, indeed, we hear these things, but it haven't reached us yet. But now oversight is not only the responsibility of parliament, it's the responsibility of each one of us. We must keep our executives in the councils, the provincial executive, national ministers, MECs, mayors, we must keep them accountable, but we must also do it by supporting our leadership. But what must happen is that we must engage one another. I have a serious, serious, serious problem, but I can't say with the new crop because we brought them in November. But before we had this problem of councillors that after you have elected them, they are afraid to speak to you. I don't know what is that, but they are afraid to speak to you. You know, when I was a premier in your, in your neighboring province, I saw the people of the province more than their local councillors. People will tell me you are here for the second time this month. We have never seen our councillor. So the, what we want to achieve is that in working together, we are fighting too much and we are not achieving a lot in the fights that we are fighting. What must happen? is that we should engage one another. And communities must get involved in what committees, in whatever, to make sure that we say, if I am the what committee member on gender, from time to time, let me engage the women of my what 
to hear what is it that they want me to take forward to the council. All of us, let us take responsibility. We will build the society that we want to achieve. I thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, but this is still my turn. They will chair later. <laughs> so we are now going to, we are going to proceed. Now I didn't mention it, and I didn't tell the deputy speaker also to mention it. But in this process of engaging the women of South Africa, we work together with the Gender Commission, the Commission on Gender Equality, we work together with the FFC, FFC Finance and Fiscal Commission, and we also work together with Stats SA. Now, Stats SA is an initiator. They gave us the information that was necessary for us to know what is this current position in the, in the, the provinces. But Stats SA, we, don't, we, we didn't invite them for the, for the report back sessions because we just needed the information from them. But we are continuing, and we will now call on the commission of the, commi the commissioner of the Commission of Gender Equality to continue to make an input. And now you must know, I can't see, to make an input on the progress made in institutionalizing gender mainstreaming across the departments and the districts. I don't know who must uh, Matebula have actually mandated by the commissioner, if we can just know. Remember, there are still people on the virtual platform that is part of us. Mzwandile, who is there? Thank you so much, uh, to be the chairperson of uh, NCOP. I am Sidi Korakolote, the commissioner at the Commission for Gender Equality. I was deployed by the chairperson, Commissioner Tamara Matebula. Thank you. If the chairperson, then we continue. If the chairperson of the NCOP, allow me, in the interest of time, to say all protocol observed. We are invited here to give feedback on two key issues progress made in institutionalizing gender mainstreaming across the departments and districts to the prevailing socioeconomic challenges across the province of Bukonobo Pirini. But the deputy chairperson, before I go to give that background, allow me just to give a high level introduction on the mandate of the CGE. What is the CGE and what is its key mandate? As the Commission for Gender Equality, we derive our mandate from Section 187 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. The mandate is to promote respect for gender equality and the production and development and attainment of gender equality. We are doing that by monitoring gender equality related activities, contributing towards legislation, doing research, conduct education, advise and report on issues concerning gender equality within the country. Since we met last time, uh, deputy chairperson of the NOCP, we have implemented various uh, mainstreaming gender issues within the province, which included the outreach and advocacy programs within the district municipalities and the local municipalities of we had various stakeholder engagements within the district municipalities and the local municipalities within Bukonebu Pirima. We conducted various gender mainstreaming training and workshops on municipal IDPs within Bukonebu Pirima. Colleagues, you'll understand that the economy of Northwest, it's, it's uh, revolving around mining and it generates half of the province uh, cross domestic product. And mining historically is male dominated and patriarchy and male chauvinism is entrenched in the mining industry. So the economic driver of Northwest, which is mining, 
still is male dominated. And that's the area that we need to look at in terms of transforming the gender equality landscape within Northwest. Within the Northwest also, we have looked at the gender uh, crime statistics of Northwest. In the previous quarter, there were 252 cases of murder in the first quarter of 2022. And there was a slight decrease in the second quarter where there were 248 cases of murder reported. In the Northwest province, the prevalence of sexual cases during the first quarter stood at 857 cases reported. And there was an increase of these sexual offenses cases in the second quarter by 67 uh, cases. So it moved from 857 to 924 cases. So it's about 7.8% increase on reported cases of sexual offenses. There was also an uh, increase on the areas of assaults with grievously bodily harms. There was also some decrease on the areas of attempted murders. murders. There was also amongst the various provinces, the Northwest province has recorded 692 rape cases during the first quarter. And also it, uh, uh, an increase of about 777 cases in the second quarter. This is about 85, uh, 85 uh, rapes that were quite or occurred, and it constitutes about 12.2% increase of rape cases uh, in, in, in Northwest between the first and the second quarter. There are some uh, improvements in terms of the issues of gender budgeting within the municipalities. But in conclusion, what we want to zoom in going forward is around the area of economic violence against women in Northwest. We want to zoom into that by monitoring the procurement spend of the public and the private sector on women owned and controlled businesses in Northwest. Because if you don't address the economic violence that is being perpetuated against women, we are unlikely to win the war against gender-based violence in this country. We'll also look at economic violence against women in the Northwest by monitoring the employment equity targets in the public and the private sector. I stated before in my presentation that if you look at mining, it is still a male-dominated industry. But also within government itself, some of the departments and municipal, municipalities are still having the male dominated leadership and that needs to be addressed. In conclusion, Deputy Chairperson of the NOCP and colleagues, allow me to quote His Excellency President Ramaphosa when he said, open quote, violence against women is a men's problem. And as South African men, let us take the responsibility of our actions. We must treat the women and the girls of our country with care and respect, close quote. In most cases, in the HR spaces and the procurement spaces, those who are operating in those spaces are men. And they sometimes, some of them, request sexual favors before they can provide services to women. And that needs to be addressed. So as men, including me, we have to take responsibility of our actions and treat the women and girls of our country with care and respect. Thank you so much, Deputy Chairperson of the NSWP. Thank you so much. to the Finance and Fiscal Commission.
for an assessment of gender mainstreaming in the financial allocations of the various departments. Now, Dr. Mbava if actually delegated people from the commission. Nomonde, I'm sure you are on the virtual platform. I don't know you are delegated with someone. Can we get the name? Chen Seng. Uh, good morning. So Chen and Nomonde, we will give over to you to make your input. Thank you and welcome. Uh, thank you most kindly, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy uh, Chevison uh, of the NCOP and uh, Deputy Speaker uh, and uh, all other honorable members and, uh, and MECs uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen present. Um, uh, just on behalf of uh, my chairperson, Dr. Mbava, uh, her apologies due to unforeseen circumstances. Uh, if I may share slides, and uh, whilst I do that, uh, may I just uh, applaud you, Honourable uh, Deputy Chairperson, for the powerful address uh, in the beginning. Indeed, um, any of these, uh, these um, shall we say, basic services and or general services uh, that are of public nature and also private nature uh, are all very actually gender, gender sensitive, uh, that it impacts uh, households um, and women specific as uh, indeed uh, the leaders uh, of our households uh, are uh, mostly uh, women in the main. Um, so let me uh, go through my presentation um, with quick introduction as to the role and function of the FFC. Our mandate essentially is uh, to advise uh, Parliament legislature uh, regarding uh, financial and fiscal matters. We look at uh, the importance of this gender responsive budgeting uh, and the Women's Charter for the Accelerated Development and key aspects of that gender responsive budgeting. And um, we will share with you, uh, Honorable Chair and members um, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, regarding uh, our method of analysis and looking very briefly at the data, but ultimately giving you uh, our key findings and our recommendations. Um, just very uh, skipping through the mandate um, that is uh, uh, already specified, but essentially um, the importance of gender responsive budgeting and women's charter is essentially this concept and principle that uh, it's obviously not effective when only half the team is or isn't uh, playing, right? Uh, so it's, it's the whole of South Africa, both men and women, and that it requires uh, as with all programs and functions and all uh, public service and goods, um, is that a successful intergovernmental fiscal relations systems and the finances, the money, uh, not just the people, but also the money at first, um, is uh, one that is sensitive to the needs uh, of uh, and in, to, in its delivery. And so priority actions are three of the accelerated development uh, acknowledges, uh, among others, the need for this tangible, uh, tangible and uh, developed uh, uh, plans uh, for the advancement and realization of gender equality. And that also means, of course, all the resource plans and the alignment thereof uh, to support uh, the uh, delivery of uh, those programs. And so it should, gender equality should really, really begin uh, in all budget uh, and all budgeting at the beginning of the budgeting process in terms of uh, those documents, uh, in terms of the law, Division of Revenue Bill, even at the point of the MTBPS, when uh, first remember that it is a policy statement, so it's a plan going forward. And as well as when, you, when we have resources attaching, what is it attaching to? Ultimately, the strategic plans and annual performance plans uh, going there. Uh, to, uh, to achieve those targets. And so the target makes it incredibly, uh, I mean, important uh, for the uh, plans to be successful. Adequate budget allocations uh, to support the input, to support the gender equality and develop uh, programs for women empowerment, institutionalization of the gender disaggregated data. This is, in, uh, as per our research, I found that uh, we can't measure what we don't see, right? Or we can't do anything about uh, what we don't see. And so it's incredibly important uh, to um, have the data 
as uh, Honorable David Chaperson has already said, that uh, the information coming out of from status is is, is uh, essentially the uh, light that shed on the on, on the issue at hand to address it properly um, and to finding the right solutions to uh, to the problems and to the issues. And so in 2022, we conducted a study, and this means uh, not uh, we have already done the study. In fact, uh, we tabled the 20, uh, the, our annual submission for the 2022-23 Division of Revenue, and that was tabled last year at Parliament. Uh, this uh, study uh, addressing gender inequality through gender budgeting in the public sector. And that the study assessed the effectiveness of key departmental budgets. We looked at including, of course, the, uh, the Commission for Gender Equality and others and departments um, in looking at how are these uh, departments and entities are funded in, 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 in affecting um, those, all those good changes, as Honorable David Chair has already spoken to, uh, in terms of changing the legislations uh, to be more uh, power, um, empowering uh, for women in specific and, and, and youth and uh, people with disabilities. And, and so what we found is that uh, there is a limited, uh, despite all uh, the many, uh, as the beginning, uh, the speaker did say, uh, the many dis, uh, sort of uh, commitments made and signatures, uh, signatories that we are part of as South Africa um, to even international engagement on this uh, gender issue. Um, there's limited mainstreaming of uh, uh, gender issues in the departmental budget processes. And uh, the main reason for this is that uh, departments generally lack uh, the gender disaggregated data and information. What we find essentially is that uh, the data, although it's there and it is in some ways disaggregated, it's just disaggregated very um, uh, single dimension. In terms of like unidimensional, uh, that it's just men versus women, and but uh, but or uh, say industries or um, or by certain say uh, education uh, educational attainments, for example. So it's only that one variable or one dimension uh, cut to the issue, rather than multi-dimensional uh, uh, sort of intersecting with gender. Um, there is, however, some data at, for example, in education, real, uh, at real, I think it was the realistic uh, school survey where they do dissect it, uh, not just by grades, but also by gender um, that we have. But when we move on to the point of um, the issues like water, basic services, or grants recipients, uh, those things, um, it sometimes it tends to be a rather one dimensional or it, uh, it um, suffers a tremendous amount of uh, biases in terms of uh, or miscount or misspecification of the uh, of the observations in the data and further to, and that makes the planning difficult therefore and or inaccurate ultimately limited gender disaggregated data again uh, is that it can't be found um in in certain domains or within the working knowledge of uh, departments uh, so we will find uh, that yes there is some data in education department or health department or uh, the social development uh, functions but it's not gender focused in the sense that it allows or informs policy uh, decisions or policy uh, solutions to be derived to address um, and so we go back to this point about the gender response of budgeting, because uh, at the point of budgeting, uh, you, uh, you would agree is that um, generally it's money follows function or finance follows function. So first is we got to understand what functions are and then we attach those uh, money to it. So when, when we are at the point of budgeting already, it should be very, very clear that what functions are we trying to achieve? What are the targets that we're trying to achieve? And, and so even with that uh, lacking of uh, or uh, specificity when we come to um, the functions, we also find that lack thereof in the budgeting process so that planning does not 
uh, the center of it is not gender in, uh, gender sensitive enough or gender informed enough on the issue. And then the budgeting processes also, it generally focuses very much on the economic functions or um, the or certain uh, uh, sort of sectors or, or uh, you know that there is the economic grouping of uh, of budgeting, but not enough so as the uh, video uh, Jefferson has, uh, has alluded to is that when we think about something like water, do we think, uh, do we understand the planners and the budget and throughout the budgeting process understand that it impacts especially women the most? Um, so that understanding is quite lacking in terms of the gender responsive budgeting process. Um, also, uh, further on, uh, in terms of our method of analysis, um, uh, just to summarize, is essentially we looked at the provincial, uh, that is the Northwest uh, Provincial Development Plan and uh, strategic, uh, strategic plans for the province and look at uh, essentially uh, in summary uh, what are the, um, uh, the trends and developments thereof. Um, we find that the Office of the Premier Revised Strategic Plan was reviewed, the Office states uh, that strides have been made, and then especially with the understanding of uh, those basic services, but it is not explicitly stated, unfortunately, on those improvements who benefited in terms of gender dimensions. And that is the point that we were driving, uh, I was driving in the beginning. And also on the mandate, the office states the need to institutionalize policies and strategies. However, the provinces should also expand this approach uh, in all of its policies and strategies in ensuring that there are gender mainstream in line uh, with the national agenda of achieving women empowerment and gender equality. Um, and so, as I said, uh, very much in terms of budgeting and approach uh, uh, overall, uh, not just the province, but also nationally, it's a very economic function focus rather than gender focus. Um, it could be a, a room for its uh, second dimension uh, so not just the main uh, one-dimensional approach to analyzing or monitoring, but also uh, the uh, multi-dimensional approach to it. Um, also, the population in Northwest employment population is gender differentiated. Um, we look at specifically the, um, the employment and the, or the labor market dynamics. In terms of unemployment figures in the province are shown that uh, we found that uh, they have increased, uh, but are again, not disaggregated uh, uh, enough uh, in terms of uh, gender um, uh, details. Um, and further on, uh, with respect to other sectors and other dissection of uh, the data and information, um, we see this uh, general lack of, uh, of uh, gender sensitive data and, or gender, gender um, uh, uh, specific uh, dissection. Um, and also that we are in here the, uh, is of the view, the commission is of the view uh, that the office should oversee that in its strategy and expand on its uh, responsiveness, um, not just in the plan, but also in the budget and also ultimately uh, monitoring evaluation in the outcome of in terms of those uh, labor market uh, markers. Um, and data. And here uh, we just uh, are showing some of the uh, basically uh, finance allocation, uh, financial allocations to uh, and the performance uh, measurement thereof uh, for specifically social developments. Here is education and health uh, with the lenses of the, um, the gender specific uh, information. And as well as, um, again, for instance, um, these indi performance indicators for health, we see these performance indicators, but we don't see that gender um, specific or gender focused uh, way of uh, analyzing the outcome. And that is ultimately the, our point in, the, the, in, in our analysis um, that we found that there is that lack and that the lack of information and that uh, improvement could be made uh, in terms of uh, making those performance targets even more gender specific. Um, and uh, however, we would like to also say that uh, the strategy by the office does indicate strides. Um, some improvement have been made and the strategy has been changed um, with budget allocations um, initiated both from the province and also national sphere. 
um, to try and uh, be more gender focused. Um, however, um, we need to, as with all uh, public sector functions and programs and, and purpose, um, is the monitoring and evaluation uh, uh, the, the, of these programs and progress uh, that, uh, that, that shall keep us in check and also accountable uh, to where we are as a country moving towards a gender um, responsive budgeting and, uh, and gender sensitive um, um, and uh, improvement um, and equality improvements. Um, so that is our uh, presentation that is available and tabled uh, before you. Uh, thank you again uh, for having us and uh, we shall carry on um, keeping uh, a lookout uh, for the progress thereof. Uh, thank you, Chair. So we can see that the Finance and Fiscal Commission usually consult uh, the executive as well as the legislature on issues of of budget and so on and i think he, he tried to give us a, a perspective on the northwest and it was more or less uh enlightening i think it was very enlightening thank you very much once again to the ffc we've got we know most we see who is the mec that we have here virtual i mean uh, physically physically and we also have our executive mayors that will be introduced later here but we will also have MECs that is having uh, problems with connectivity others that are having bereavement but we will have senior officials from the departments that will report back on the issues like economy education the MEC is trying to connect, but she's got connectivity problems. We can understand with the load shedding, there is always that issue. But we will have someone from the, uh, uh, a director from the department that will give us the report because what we want is the report. And it's very important for us to understand better. At the end of all the presentations, if there is any in interaction that you want to do, we will allow that. But I said to you, today is a report back session because we have spoken. We cannot speak every time. Fine. So we have spoken. Now we are getting feedback and we want to listen to that feedback. Thank you. Uh, we will now give over to Honorable Bartlett that will be chairing this next session. She, Honorable Bartlett is a member of the National Council of Provinces. She was a former MEC of education in the Northern Cape, as well as a, what am I lying? A former, <laughs> former MEC for, for, for social development, ooh, just out of field, and safety education. before, but education was the last one that she, that education was the last one that she had when I was still there. Now she's telling me social development is the last one before she went to the NCOP. In the NCOP, she's the provincial whip of the Northern Cape. So, but today she's here as a member of the National Council of Provinces, person with a lot of responsibility. She works more than me. That is the reason why I thought, let, let me show the people of this hardworking person. I, <laughs> over to you, Honorable Park. Malibongwe. Malibongwe. Good morning to all. Firstly, good morning to my colleagues, my sisters, the MECs, the ones on the platform, and the one with me at the table. And lastly, to my chief commander, the one who's just saying, you're doing that and I'm going to do it. I'm used to that. Mrs. Uh, so I look at the deputy chair of National Council of Provinces. And now I've asked her, for well now I will just stand and introduce my former colleague, not introduce her, ask her to speak. And from there, I'll tell you, I'm going to sit and sit and sit. Is that okay? <laughs> I just came here to ask for your forgiveness. Now, like the deputy chair said, today is report back session. So I must just do what I must do. I must call on the MEC of Social Development. And she must just come to report back because already we had a session. 
gehoorig, on the law reform to address gender-based violence, en ek het blij vir die man wat al sê, no crime, not in my name. So, MEC, my sister, can you just come to the fourth? She also asked to be seated, but for now she will stand, but the viewers as a sit and pray and come greet you. That's some problems with Jella. Is it correct? Thank you very much. Let me see. Thank you very much. Um, Honorable Chairperson, Deputy Chair of the NCOP, Ms. Sylvia Lucas, um, my former colleague, uh, Honorable Bartlett, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, my colleague Melina Micha, uh, together with the colleagues that are in the platform, and my Honorable members of this house, I saw a Honorable Sonai Kile, and I'm not sure where, uh, if I have not seen the others, they must just pardon me. And, um, okay. <laughs> and let me take this opportunity also to acknowledge the presence of our executive mayors, councillors that are here, uh, all the women that are here and the males that are here to come and make sure that they support us. I really appreciate that from social development that at least you are here to come and, and support us. Malibongwe. Igamala Makosikas. Yeah, uh, honorable chair, as social development, you would remember that, and, and um, you are right to say that today it should be a session where we are reporting. So today, what you have written to us to report about it's, it's here today, that is something that I'm going to present now. To appraise the National Council of Provinces on programs implemented by the Provincial Department of Social Development in relation to Women's Charter for Accelerated Development. Uh, you know, uh, Honorable Chair, the Northwest, like other provinces, experience incidents of domestic and gender-based violence. The 2016 demographic and health survey further shows that 70% of younger women aged 18 to 24 had experienced violence from a partner in the 12 months before the survey. And 2.1% described this as often and 8% as sometimes, compared to the 16.7% among women 65 years old and older. You can imagine if a, an, a woman who is 65 years of old being raped or killed. And other separated and divorced women were more likely to experience violence, 40%, followed by those living together in 31.1%. The department is working alongside with various stakeholders and communities in the implementation of comprehensive gender-based violence and femicide prevention and mitigating strategies with the strategic objective of ending GBVF by 2030. We are working together with many stakeholders on this aspect. Under law reforms to address GBVF, constitution is there of South Africa to protect the basic rights of women and children. Domestic Violence Act 111 of 
1998, which protects victims from further victimization. This act assists because you will get a victim going to the police station to report a case. When you get there, you are being victimized by the same police officers who are supposed to help you. So we have the act that protect us from further victimization. And I think the sessions like these, honorable uh, members, will assist to empower our women and children not to be further victimized. Because if you are at the police station, you think you are safe. And when you are there, you, you, you relax and think that at least I am safe here. And if you are not safe, you must know that you need to also open a case against the very same policeman or woman who is actually victimizing you further. You must be empowered and know that you have the right to do that. We have prevention and combating of trafficking uh, in persons of uh, Act 7 of 2013. This prevention and combating of trafficking in person prescribes the provision of social services and places of safety for victims of women, uh, human trafficking. And then we have sexual offenses amendment and related matters Act 66 of 2008. Sexual Offenses Act regulate the protection of victims of sexual offenses. We have these laws that from time to time when we are in gathering like this, we need to impart knowledge on our women and children so that they know these acts and they are able to put them in practice. Well, you must know that you have the right and you have the act that will help you not to be victimized. On a first level of prevention services, honorable chair, awareness raising through uh, the following. Our department is doing awareness uh, on 16 days of activism for no violence against women and children that we know on the 25th November to the 10th uh, December. On Women's Month through awareness campaigns, workshops, seminars, door-to-door -door campaigns, and community dialogues. This is something that we are doing before even that time. We don't wait for August and then we do all these campaigns. We have Men's Month raising awareness about the fight against gender-based violence. What we do as a department, we don't concentrate on women only. We also are concentrating on these young boys that we are raising. And I always tell um, my colleagues that, you know, I'm having two boys, honorable chair, and we can't neglect a boy child because at the end of the day, they become the perpetrators. So, you know, when we sit in uh, boys assemblies, it becomes very emotional when you hear how those boys have been abused. Some will tell you, honorable chair and honorable members, that they've been abused or they've been taught to uh, use drugs at the age of 12 years. So you wonder what is happening amongst our society. So it means when whatever we do in our little corners, in our homes, whatever we preach, we also need to nourish this boy child because they are the ones now who are becoming perpetrators. If you get to cases where you get a 20-year-old 20, uh, 20 boy or 18-year-old boy who killed his mother and father or who killed the grandmother, it becomes, you become shocked. So these are the things that we, we as the department see that is important also to get together with the men assembly and the boys. And then we have the victims rights week, human trafficking week, utilization of uh, everyday heroes brand 
for awareness raising on victimization abuse. And then we have introduced the Orange Day campaign on the 25th of every month. Uh, from time to time, we normally wear black uh, when we talk about gender-based violence. And it's like, it's something that is, uh, we, we just using it for the sake of wearing it. Uh, so we have, as a department said, let us put a bright color and say uh, women and children need to be cared for. So let's put orange. So in our department, and we are encouraging our women who are here and men, together with our mayors, that we wear orange on the 25th of every month so that we make this awareness campaign. But also, we are working together with a uh, men's sector in that regard. And then on awareness, uh, like I said, this is what we, we do. But also, Honorable Chair, as a department, we are doing psychosocial support services, and we are also referring victims when necessary. Provision of overnight accommodation when necessary, because at some point, there are women who are being abused at night, and you don't know where to go. So we have shelters where you can run to so that you, you are spared your life is spared. So we have that and you have our social workers who are counseling and debriefing them. We have skills development, economic empowerment programs in the department. We impact, uh, in fact, victim impact report compiled for courts. What we do there, you are being counseled and also you are being prepared to go to court. Intermediary services rendered for children during court appearance. We also prepare kids so that they can be able to go to court. Uh, that's a uh, court preparation and support. And then what we do, honorable chair, we have family reunification services and community reintegration referral for economic empowerment and job opportunities. On family reunification, we have uh, parents, for instance, who are not in good terms with their kids or maybe kids who are using drugs. We, we take them to the rehab and then from there, we try by all means to reunify them with their families because we can't keep them there forever. And then what we did, uh, Honorable Chair and members, is that in Dr. KK, we have five shelters where they are doing counseling and support, trauma management and support, sheltering provision uh, accommodation, containment, temporary provision of overnight accommodation, court preparation and escorting, referrals to SAPS, Department of Justice, um, and constitutional development, home affairs, legal aid board. Uh, we have those shelters in Nakamudir Mulema. We have Dr. KK3. We have RSM, Dr. RSM2. And then we have Bojanala, which are six. And then the targeted intervention. We have targeted this time around uh, to achieve 11,432. You know, on victims of gender-based violence receiving psychosocial support, we are targeting a number of 950 because we are just praying that these numbers can be reduced because yes, it's an output, but also uh, it, it speaks bad with us if we have to have many numbers of women who are being abused and receiving psychosocial support. We pray that one day when we stand here, we will say that our stats 
have been uh, reduced. Uh, on the assessment of those interventions, Honorable Chair, we have the integrated service delivery approach to promote cost effectiveness in program implementation and then prevention program created awareness among community. The main program activate positive role models for boys and young men. We always plead to our male counterparts, our male counterparts to take responsibility of these young men that we are nourishing. If you have a child, because some of them, these boys say that they are longing for their fathers and their fathers don't even want to come visit or whatever case may be. So we are pleading with males to join hand with us. We are not even saying if I'm a single mother and then I have a boy, it doesn't mean if you have to come visit your kids and do all sort of things that a male counterpart can do or a father can women and 13 are males. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair and members. Thank you very much. Can you just give a hands? Like I'm better than a clap as I rise the air. <laughs> Can you give a... <laughs> thank you very much, Baya Danke. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt this is the year, but you know, we must stick to time. And each uh, speaker only have 10 minutes. I know we have a lot of things to speak about, but if we don't limit ourselves, we can have a lot of in Northern Cape is by affair. So, but I just want to greet my colleagues of National Parliament on the platform. So good morning to them and also welcome, especially the ones of Northwest who's also on the platform. So, then the, our next speaker, will be Pamela. The MEC of Education just sent her to represent him. Where's Pamela? Is she here? Okay. Okay, Pamela, can you just give her a hand?
sorry, she's an acting chief director, né? Yeah, ah, okay. Education. But promoting access to quality education for women, girls, curbing pregnancy, well, yes, parate na amongst girls, né? Mm. It's a sensitive issue. It's a must issue. Mm. Thanks. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair of the session, uh, Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP, Honorable Members of the Legislature and the NCOP, the Executive Mayor, various women formations, various officials from the various departments and the municipalities, and Bombay in general. Good morning. As indicated, I am Pamela Rasutswani. I'm going to present on behalf of the MEC for Education on what the department has done. Now, the first thing that we, we looked at is promoting access to quality education among girls. There is a special program in the department that we normally do year in, year out, which is a take a girl learner to work. Initially, it was funded by a, a it was funded, but now it's done internally. There's a day that we set aside for learners to come to the department and just shadow learn what we do. We also have done a number of career ex exposure for district on what we call STEM subjects. Now STEM subjects are in grade 12, we refer to maths and science. In grade nine, we refer to technology and mathematics. And in grade six, we refer to uh, NS Tech as well as mathematics. Now these uh, uh, programs are run parallel with various mining sectors as well as various uh, energy sector to expose our girl learners to these um, uh, categories. There is also a program targeting girl learners that are gifted, that are potentially gifted, especially in mathematics. This program, we call it Girl Learner Improvement Plan. We, during the first quarter of the financial year, of the academic year, we identify those learners and we identify them in the exit classes, grade six, grade nine, as well as grade 12. These learners are offered extra classes on Saturdays, every Saturday, as well as uh, during holidays, they attend camps. Um, they are normally taught by expert educators. In other words, the best teachers in the province are selected to be able to run those camps. That is, we try to improve their chances of, of getting better in medicine science. We also have a program that provides learners with sanitary dignity towels. The experience is that most of the learners in the past would miss a lot of learning and teaching because they could not go to school when it's that time of the month. But we have now started to provide. Now in the previous financial year, we have given all learners in special schools, in mega farm schools from quarter one until quarter four. And for those schools that are in quintile one up to three, that's, that's the lowest poverty ranked schools. We only provided in quarter one as well as in quarter four. And the delay was, there was budget set aside for the program, but the delay was caused by um, the delay in the procurement processes. We also now look at curbing pregnancy among gay learners. Um, the early and unintended pregnancy among learners continues to undermine our efforts to support gay learners and make sure that they complete the basic education. In the report that was provided from our health facilities between in the previous academic year, between ages 10 and to, up to 14, there were deliveries of 153 learners. In other words, girl learners between those ages delivered children in the previous year. There was also delivery of, of, of children uh, between age 15 to 19, 8,806 girl learners delivered children or delivered babies during that time. They are children themselves. We have identified 73 schools that reported more than nine learners that were pregnant in the academic year. In other words, the breakdown was in um, about 73 schools that still had um, learners who were pregnant, none less than 10, less than nine. All of them had more than nine learners in the school. The Department of Education recognizes the undesirable health, educational 
social, psychological, emotional, and economic consequences of early unintended pregnancies. Um, in trying to keep the high rate or early rate of pregnancy, because it also has higher chances of HIV infections among adolescent girl children, as well as young women. Also of concern in the reported deliveries is the rising number of adolescent girls, girls who are giving birth between 10 and 15. These numbers are also indicative of child sexual abuse as a concern for sex in the country is 16. So if they've been able to deliver babies before the age of 16, it means there has been a child sexual abuse. Any unintended pregnancy amongst learners uh, consequences may result in interrupted schooling and resultant school dropout. Number of learners, once they, they fall pregnant, they're unable to come back because they now have a responsibility to take care of their babies. And this leads to lack of social security as well as poverty. The non-completion of secondary school education limits the life and potential among the teenage population. So once they drop out of school and do not complete secondary schools, there's a strong likelihood that they may not even be able to earn a living. Um, the Department of Education has developed a policy. This, this policy is the policy on the prevention and management of learner pregnancy in schools in order to reduce the incidence of learner pregnancy through provisioning of quality, comprehensive sexuality education. I know there was a lot of halabaloo when people did not understand what this comprehensive sexuality education is, but it is controlled. And access to adolescent and youth-friendly youth sexual reproductive health services to promote the constitutional rights of girls to education by ensuring that they're not excluded from school as a result of pregnancy. We will remember that in the past, once a child fell pregnant, the school would be quick to say, no, you have to stay home. You can no longer stay now. Now the policy is protecting those children to show that they remain in school. Um, the department is also providing sexual reproductive health knowledge and age appropriate uh, comprehensive information through life orientation curriculum. So we're not bombarding children with information that may not be appropriate to their age. We provide that which is appropriate to our age. This includes sexual debut, a delayed sexual debut, uh, abstinence and contraception. In other words, they should delay participating in, in sexual activities and as well as a role of gender and power dynamics in relationships. We also have peer education programs in schools, um, and these ones are also uh, implemented through the LO curriculum. The department is also facilitating access to sexual productive health through the integrated school health program. This school health program are provided through a multi-sectoral collaboration. We cannot do it on ourselves as education so we do it with health, we do it with social development, we do it with various NGOs in the communities and through our QLTC. Uh, we also at schools provide what we call care counseling and support. Um, this care and counseling is provided to girl learners and we also provide them with information on gender and power dynamics, the risk on gender-based violence, as well as sexual violence. We assist them through this program. Through sexual and gender-based violence workshop, teachers are capacitated. Now, educators have a huge responsibility to support these learners who, in many a times, they only get a, a, a experience at school. Measures taken when pregnancy is a result of sexual rape or, or sexual abuse or, or rape, and as well as a referral and strategic partnership, we train educators on those programs. The impact and mitigation of, of, of pregnancy, we retain learners as much as possible. We protect the right of learners to education, including continuation of schooling within medical safety procedures. There we have the support of the Department of Health. 
flexibility to accommodate reasonable absence during pregnancy. So they are given a number of days to be absent from school without really losing the important, the important uh, uh, provisions at school. Provision of continuous educational support post-delivery while facilitating earliest return to school. We know that COVID came with a lot of problems, but one of the things it introduced to us was also the use of teams. So pregnant learners are also supported through some uh, teams programs. Uh, provisioning of sexual reproductive health in school. Um, workshops have been done to capacitate principals as well as life orientation departmental heads of the 73 schools, those 73 schools that we said not less than nine learners were pregnant in that school. The, the, the principals and the HODs have been trained. We conducted the SRH school-based workshop for SGBs in the very same 73 schools. We also held parents advocacy sessions with the DBE policy the health policy, as well as the standard operating procedures for the provisioning of this policy. We capacitated learner representatives and also the peer structures on the SOPs of the, this policy in, in, in schools. Intervention to address bullying in schools. This is the sketch that affects a number of our schools. We continue to have anti-bullying campaigns at various schools. The plan has developed, has been developed to ensure that all schools will be uh, experiencing some of, of the campaign. What we have done in the previous month, we did one for Bethel High School, and we also did one for Lizardin High School. These were some schools that were identified as the hotspots for uh, bullying. The plan is to have the bullying campaign yes, every month know. at various schools. We also have what we call a boys camp. This boys camp will be done also this year. It was uh, mentioned as a flagship. This is where we take various, a number of boy learners into a camp. We provide them with various speakers from various formations. That tries to impart knowledge on life skills, on how to become best men, how to mentor them into manhood, even post this exercise. Some of the men who came, who came to the, our camp, uh, boys camp continue to mentor the boys even outside the program itself. The protocol for management of reporting sexual abuse and harassment sorry, sorry, is in place in schools. Me? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm just about to. Um, the program of school safety officer in collaboration with SAPS, our QLC structures also are helping. Overall in the department, um, there are 32 SMS members, out of them, 13 of them are women, which is 40,6%. The HOD is a woman. Our general focal person is a deputy direct director level. And we also have bursaries that are um, inclusive of women. What we try to do, Honorable Chair, is to make sure that uh, every information that is reported in the department is disaggregated according to gender. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye, Danke. A bit is a hot topic, ne? And it affects our children. When it affects our children, it affects us. So that's why the former president said, Nelson Mandela, that the key to our children's success is education. And we are worried about the pregnancies, whether it's in school or out of school. So sorry, my sister, but it's just the time factor. Uh, and then our next speaker, our next speaker is the Chief Director, Lebu Diali. Is Lebu here? Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Lebu. Uh, the unfortunate thing about the chairperson is that it must stick to time. 10 minutes. I know all of us want to hear because everything that we said is very much important. We can complete. Uh, Lebu is the Chief Director in the Department of Economic Development. Can you give a hand, please? Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, and good morning to everyone. Allow me to say that protocol observed in the interest of time. I am standing here, it has, as it has been indicated earlier, to do... Sorry. 
Spanish. Yeah, okay. Okay, apologies for that. Thank you very much. As I was indicating that I am here to read the presentation that was prepared for the MEC Mosenoghi, who is currently not able to render the presentation due to sorry, other challenges. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I just ask the President Fran, please to respect the speaker because we can hear you. Thank you very much. With regards to the program, it's indicated that the Department of Economic Development is supposed to respond on by local campaign, progress made in developing local manufacturing capabilities per district, stimulating the township and rural economy accelerate to women participation in the economy, as well as the empowerment fund. Uh, in terms of the presentation, we are to provide progress on the implementation of the provision of the 2021 Women's Charter for Accelerated Development of the Northwest Province on progress made in implementing women's development priorities as articulated in the Oversight and Accountability Framework 2021 Women's Charter, covering the following interventions, which is by local campaign, progress made in the developing local manufacturing capabilities, Pair district in the province, stimulating township and rural economies to accelerate women's participation, as well as the empowerment fund, as indicated. In 2019, the department, in partnership with Proudly South African, hosted by local campaigns through workshops in each of the four districts of the Northwest province to promote the by local and to encourage South Africans, mainly women, who may are the main buyers to the products that are proudly made here in South Africa. The proudly South African logo was also showcased in that process. A number of workshops where mainly women were invited to be encouraged to buy local products over and above imported products to contribute to the growth of South African economy, increase and sustain their local jobs. On the 27th of August, 2019, a provincial workshop in partnership with proudly South African was also hosted in Rustenburg in the Hunter's Rest Hotel. Zooming into why localization, South Africa has an over propensity to import goods which could otherwise be produced in South Africa. Every year, the South African economy spends approximately 25% of the national wealth created on goods imported from other countries. According to the Industrial Development Corporation, for every job created or sustained in the manufacturing industry, nearly four jobs are created or sustained in direct and indirect, apologies. Apologies, Chairperson. Okay, I'm back on the platform. According to the Industrial Development Corporation, for every job created or sustained, we create a nearly um, four jobs are created to sustain and uh, in a direct and indirect form in terms of supplier industries. A focus in localization is therefore at the heart of government strategy to create sustainable jobs for South Africa and build the economy based on long-term lasting prosperity. In the last year, Chairperson, South, Africa manufacture, South African manufacturers have increased capacity for COVID-19 essentials, showing what can be done locally. Zooming into the localization program and its objectives, we looked into building manufacturing capacities for SMMEs, coordination of import replacements plan for SMMEs. We looked into the establishment of a route to market framework for SMMEs manufactured products, prepared and support for SMMEs towards export and penetration of the new markets, to implement product development and support interventions, implementation of new skills, to support new interventions, facilitate appropriate manufacturing technologies deployment to product upgrading, facilitate dig digitization and, and, and commerce in the economic business channels, 
to localize funding support linked to black industrial program. Chairperson, the targeted industrial uh, industries for localization stands as follows in the Northwest province. Targeted industry sectors prioritized for localizations include clothing and textile. The department in partnership with CEDA and IDC are supporting the Itireland Textile Hub in Economy in Orkney, which is in the Dr. District, Dr. Kenneth Gaunda District, where women entrepreneurs have formed a cooperative. They have been assisted by this Department of Economic Development, Environment, Tourism, and Conservation to set up clothing production line. Key products manufactured include overalls, dresses, shirts, and trousers. The cooperative will be supported with an embroidery machine that will enable them to brand their clothing and to manufacture customized designs for some customs uh, or new customers. In line with the national reimagined industrial strategy, the Northwest focus is on the following clothing, textile, footwear, leather, poultry, and furniture. The focus being to drive improved performance, job creation, economic inclusion, and competitiveness and efficiency. When we go into the Bojanala district, the Bojanala SEZ business case for the establishment of the SEZ has been completed, Chairperson, and by the end of the second quarter, the province will resubmit and improve business case. So, for the sorry, can, can you just speak more to the mic? Because we can't hear properly. More to the mic. I, do, do you hear her? So I uh, think if we, if we can, is it is the, the issue is that she's worried about the time, but it is as if you are not hearing her because we can hear the murmuring here. Yes, Miguel, Are we fine, Chair? Can you just give us space? Because I realize that this is very much important. I hope you understand this about by local, uh, local campaign. So I think it's important for us as women really to listen to this. Okay. Chairperson, I was talking to the Bojanala SEZ business, which I have uh, already earlier indicated that we have finalized the business plan and working on uh, the implementation process. Uh, manufacturing sector localization is mainly targeted for the Dr. Kenneth Kaunda and Bojanala districts mainly to replace mining, which is non-renewable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is with the uh, the with the problem is with the technology here because I also hear myself when I go deep. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Can you just give me a second? Can you just give me a second? Uh, the sound. Oh, I must try to use this one. Sorry, people, can we just, just give a space for one more minute, please? Ne? Is this one better? I'm going to quickly move to the inclusive localization. Localization for transformation economic inclusion and jobs for women and youth. Successful localization efforts will expand the South African economy, providing opportunities and jobs for a greater number of South Africans. To ensure that historically disadvantaged South Africans can take advantage of the opportunities, government introduced the Black Industrial Program, providing funding to Black entrepreneurs who own and operate businesses. Increased localization fostered through promotion of SMME can reduce harmful economic concentration, which keeps new businesses from entering the market by building the industrial base of the economy. A larger and more transformed industrial base is what is required to provide the opportunities for more women, youth, and people with disabilities to play their role 
in building our economy and driving growth thereof. Products targeted for localization are as follows, Chairperson. Agro-processing, which is focusing mainly on food and beverage, furniture, pharmaceuticals, clothing, leather and textile, beauty and personal care products, plastic and plastic products, paper products, and also we're looking at coordinated import replacements plan for SMMEs. Establish a route to market framework for SMMEs, manufactured products, preparation and support for SMMEs towards export and market penetration again, product development, support interventions, as well as skills. The Northwest Economic Recovery Plan stands as follows. The drive to import competitiveness is thus the key to ensuring that investment in localization provides the long-term growth of provincial economy. The province has developed a Northwest Economy Recovery Plan focusing on the following areas. Agriculture and agro-processing in line with the National Agricultural Master Plan, SMME support, retail, transport and logistics, mining and mineral beneficiation, retail and tourism. The Northwest Economic Recovery and Implementation has been approved by joint clusters and is ready to be tabled to the Northwest Executive Council for approval. When we go into the township economies, we're looking at the following areas, bakeries and support program. In stimulating rural and township economies, the province is focusing on supporting 13 bakeries, mainly in our townships and rural areas. The department in partnership with Baking Council of South Africa, which is called BIXA, to provide training and baking and confectionery support. We've got about 11 bakeries that have been supported or that are currently even receiving continued support some are in, uh, there's one in Koster, the other one, or two in Taung, and others are here in Mafiking. I want to quickly zoom into the Empowerment Fund program, uh, Chairperson, so that I can give the figures in terms of that. The Empowerment Fund supports South African-owned qualifying startups, and which are those that are in operation, but they are in operation for less than one year and as well as looking at existing SMMEs and cooperatives. In terms of the figures, as at the end of April, 2022, we had received 750. Can you, can you please look at the sound? Please, is that organizing us really? Maybe I must try to. As at, it will not work because of the other I, will, I will try and raise my shocks, but I'm a soft spoken person, unfortunately, Chairperson. But I'll try my level best. As at the end of April 2022, the department had received 750 applications that needed to be processed. Out of the 750, 338 had already been inspected, 184 adjudicated and then approved is 115. Conditional approval is only 38. The ones that needs a revisited site visit is four. And those that are for further investigation is two. Declined is only 25. If I were to give the breakdown in terms of the districts, Nakamudi Rimulema is 79. Startups, and the existing were 267. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda startups is 44, existing 107, Bojanala 54 uh, startups and existing is 148, Dr. RSM 17 and startups is 34. So progress to date stands as follows. Application received 750, adjudicated 115, and already supported. Those who've already received support from the department, Chairperson, stands at 18. And on, uh, on that note, I would like to thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Can you give your hand?
Thank you very much. I'm so sorry because the, the net, the, the sound really disappointed us. I hope it will be okay now. So our next speaker from Treasury will be our Chief Director in the Office of the Premier, uh, Ms. Simo Dise. Thank you very much. And can I just ask, uh, at the end, there will be time for interaction, so you can get a few things, but not too long, because we must stick to time, but not now, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you when. And the people there at the back, can you just give space and just be a little more quiet, because really we're struggling with the sound also, and I think the overflow is also busy, busy getting full. Thanks, Mr. Dishi, you can proceed. Just stick to time, my darling. Thank you, Chairperson. My name is Charity Mudise. I am in the office of the Premier. I'm going to share with um, the people in the auditorium the speech which was supposed to be presented by the MEC of Provincial Treasury. I'll read it as it was prepared, and it reads as follows. Honorable Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP and the Chairperson of the session, Ms. Lucas, Honorable Members of Parliament, Honorable Members of the National Council of Provinces, Sorry. Honorable Speaker. Can you, just, the can you just move the mic more to you? Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I will proceed uh, with the greetings. Um, Honorable, Honorable Speaker of the Northwest Legislature, Ms. Danji, members of the provincial, Northwest Provincial Legislature, Honorable Ndade Mabi in his absence, as well as the acting premier, and colleagues in the Executive Council, leaders of political parties represented in this August sitting, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP, it gives me great pleasure to have been given this opportunity to address this August sitting on such a very sensitive and important topic of discussion. Gender mainstreaming has been embraced internationally as a strategy towards realizing gender equality. It involves the integration of gender perspective into the preparation, design, implementation, monitoring and evaluation of policies, regulatory measures, and spending programs with a view to promoting equality between men, women and men, and thus combating discrimination. Women and men have different needs and living conditions, as well as circumstances, including unequal access to and control over power, resources, human rights and institutions, including the justice system. The situation globally, including in our country, has been that women have been largely marginalized where it comes to economic opportunities. And for the greatest time, opportunities were earmarked only for our male counterparts. We have been in a process to undo this injustice. And although it has been a slow process, it is gaining momentum and we are beginning to see the fruits of our labor as we see women being considered for opportunities that were historically set aside for our male counterparts. Honorable Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP in the Northwest province, like it is the case at national and across the other eight provinces, 
we have made strides to ensure that the province budget is geared towards the effort of gender mainstreaming. Other than personnel budget included in the departmental baseline budget, the allocation for, a project, for projects that are geared towards gender as well as other uh, priority groups are as per the departmental mandates and functions and are also implemented in line with supply chain management. And such programs are largely in the Department of Social Development through the a victim empowerment unit, as well as in the office of the premier through the implementation, through the coordination of the special programs. The challenges we are faced with as a province is to have the ability to measure or locate the budget in relation to gender and other priority groups since the provincial allocation has not reached the gender responsive budgeting at this stage. As provincial treasury, we are constantly implore, imploring departments in the province to identify and to allocate budgets of programs that are responsive to gender and other priority groups. At this budgeting stage, only Personnel-driven budget can be categorized in terms of gender and other priority groups, including other classifications, which will be guided by gradual filtering of the implementation of gender-responsive budgeting in departments. Provincial departments are religiously embarking on a constant analysis of their budget to assess the responsiveness to the priorities of gender and other priority groups. This might require guidelines to direct departments on how to ensure this item is covered within their allocated budget. Departments are at this stage, not at the level where they are complying with gender responsive net budgeting, including budgeting for other a priority groups. Honorable Deputy Chairperson of NCOP, what we have discovered is that the departmental gender budgeting as well as budgeting for other priority groups are mostly combined. There are only a few cases where the medium term expenditure framework guides and gives specific directions to departments on how to budget for gender and other priority groups. In most instances, the target groups become more visible only when procurement is done through the tendering methods and department, as departments outline in their adverts, the specification and the threshold that is intended to advance gender responsiveness uh, budgeting. Provincial departments, provincial departments and public entities are guided by section 217, subsection two and three of the, of the constitution, which allows organs of states to subject to a national framework act, implement a procurement policy which provide for categories of preference in the allocation of contracts and the protection or advancement of persons or categories of persons disadvantaged by unfair discrimination. Honorable Deputy Chairperson of NCOP, in the financial year 2021, the province spent 1.8 billion on black women companies. This included the minority black owned of 601 million, which made 14% and the majority black owned uh, an amount of 1.2 million, which, uh, which equaled to 
24% of the total 4,274 billion of procurement payments on the designated groups. In 2021, department procurements towards designated groups in the province accounted only for 38.45% or 2,740 billion of the total 7,127 billion. The designated groups in these instances included companies owned by Blacks, Black women, Black youth, Black disabled, military veterans, Black rural, and companies from townships. Women-owned companies accounted for 22.63% of the procured amount of the designated groups inside the Northwest province. Honorable Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP, in conclusion, as the province, we are progressively working towards ensuring that the provincial budget responds to the principle of gender-based budgeting and have commenced, led by the Office of the Premier, to ensure such an alignment. We continuously make efforts to ensure that this alignment is achieved through the stewardship of Premier Bushi Mape, supported by Provincial Executive Council, we will continuously drive departments towards the drafting and the adoption of the budget that are responsive to gender budgeting as well as budgeting for other priority groups. I thank you. Thank you very much. Can you give a hand? I think you can do louder than that. At least we don't need electricity to be clever, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, our next speaker on community safety, crime prevention, and gender based violence hotspots and crime prevention stats uh, will now be Mr. Molifi Morule, the HUD of Education. Uh, our MEC is struggling to connect, so. Where's Mr. Molife? Mr. MC for safety. At where? No, 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 no. MC for, for community safety, yes. Yeah, he sent, he sent Mr. Molife. He sent Molife. Marule. I'm here. Let me just to... find out because the MC of safety is struggling to connect. So you send someone. He said he's HOD. Where's the HOD of community safety? It's on the platform. Yes, I'm in mean the platform, the chair. No, no, thanks. Thanks, you honor, thanks, honorable chairperson, the, the deputy chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, to the deputy speaker of the provincial legislature the acting premier, MECs available and the executive mayors. I'm Mulifi Murule, currently acting as the HOD for the Department of Community Safety and Transport Management. We were mandated to come and present to this August meeting on uh, <clears throat> the progress made by the department in relation to the gender mainstreaming program of action commitments with specific reference to the fight against gender-based violence and femicide. And uh, just to indicate by way of a background chairperson that the civilian secretariat in the province was established in terms of the Civilian Secretariat Act 2 of 2011. And the role of the civilian secretariat is to oversee the work that is performed by the South African police services in the province. And in carrying our mandate as a, as, as, as civilian secretariat, which falls squarely within the ambit and control of the Department of Community Safety and Transport Management, we are empowered by certain pieces of legislation and 
some, some among them is the Constitution of the Republic, the Police Service Act, the Domestic Violence Act, the National Development Plan, and the, as well as the Crime Prevention Strategy. And uh, Honorable Chair and members, <clears throat> the Acting Premier, we, are, we have prepared a brief presentation on the sexual related crimes for the financial year under review. And uh, we reported that rape violations have gone up by 16% from 2,210 of the previous year to 3,136 by, by last month. And uh, Honorable Chair, it is also to put it on record that uh, these crime statistics are as at the end of December 2023 as released by the Minister of Police. And we still awaiting the release of the fourth quarter statistics. The se sexual assault has gone down by 7% from 363 the previous to 339 this year. Attempted sexual offenses have increased by 11% from 196 to 217. Sexual offenses have gone up by 52% from 56 to 50 to 85 by April, 2022. Of importance to note also in our chair, deputy chairperson of the National Council of Provinces is an increase in three up to 3,777 from 3,324, which is a cumulative increase of 14%. As a department of community safety and transport management, we are continuing for this financial year or for the financial year under review. The campaign on prevention of gender-based violence and femicides against vulnerable groups, including women, were undertaken. And these campaigns had targeted problematic areas as identified through the crime trends and, and patterns of the South African police services with regard to domestic violence. And the identified areas in the province where there was an increase or a high number of these incidences of caring. There was through a geographical spread. These areas were bred in the Bajanala district, Chabani and Bitikong in Rastenberg, Mahike Mabatu, which is which are in the in the Ngakamudiri Mulema district, Taung in Dr. RSM, Ikaheng in Pochestrum and Jobeten, also within the Dr. KK district. And uh, the following were done as part of the of implementing the national strategic plan on the, on gender based HOD. violence. HOD. Hello, HOD. HOD. The people can't Hello. hear you. Not audible. Am I not audible? Yes, and the people we've been trying to inform your office that you are not audible. Is it possible? Is it possible to log on with your audio? Let me check. But we think for us not to, not to be uh, waiting too long, we will now allow the chairperson to make an announcement. Yeah, uh, I concluded now my work. The only one that I'm waiting for is like the deputy chair said, is the, the HOD. But my task is not clear. So I can't hear the younger generation, the deputy speaker, beautiful woman, 
Know that all of us are not beautiful, ne? but the young one. <laughs> so she's, she's going to take over in Malibongwe. Malibongwe. Igamala Makosikas. Igamala Makosikas. What in Java fast? What in Java fast? What in the book? Zago fast. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much um, for the opportunity. This is what we call empowerment. Um, honorable members, without further ado, um, let me before. I direct this particular program through you, the deputy chair of the NCOP, Umama Lucas, Sylvia Lucas, allow me to acknowledge the presence. Yaha, Honorable Sonakile. Honorable Sonakile is the youngest MPL in the Northwest Provincial Legislature. Not only that, uh, deputy chair, it must be known that he is here representing the LGBTQ plus. And then he's so unapologetic about his identity. So it must be acknowledged. And thank you very much for your presence, Honorable Sonakile. Without wasting any time, Honorable Members, I'll call on Councillor M. Molefe the hosting mayor of Nakamudiri Mulema. Uh, Councillor, the platform is yours. Mungwamu. Mulemba kwa itu. Lina lame kikuma lo fela fani ya meona ki mulefe. Kidu medise mutlata mudula stulo what the National Council of Provinces, Honorable Sylvia Lucas, Libotle Baba Mopota Potileng, Mutata Musa Kota Waku Kwanope Omola Oyaro Naya Fahaye, Menzi Tsao Mutsumi, Bakudu Chama Khabotle, Libo Meya Rama Kanselara, Liba Tsa Karolo Botle, Kibua mobo e mombanga kamudiri mulema e ya kilwenki mahikeng khosira tlo utzwaing di tzobota isitana le khosira motsiri muilwa. Miki kupilwe fela khore kite khubua kadi ntlatsenne. Yan tlai le khore ridire langbo me. Mi kwa tsimulu khonkika e khore ki khudi le mole la peng le le linen le teletsu pele ke me me ra go di swa jalo ka madi a na re kisa ka ona le bojalwa tota na bo re kisa ka jalo re go di le jalo re go di swa ke me ra itse gore me a ka dira sengwe le sengwe go netefatsa gore bana ga ba ro ba le katlala janong re kupilwe gore Talo seho redirayenka district developmental model model encha eitilenka 2019 iti suwa ke re president Cyril Ramaphosa. Merika netifata hormodi beke nse pedite di fiti lenga rense rebuwa le di maspala teke sato angho di umaka rebuwa hore mo kana kwere le mo hoyo nake na koya IDP le budget ya di ngwaga di le tlano tse di tlang re dumalane ka bongwe ba pelo ka di ntla tse di rileng tse di tla netefatsang gore bomme ba ne wa tsono e mo economying ya rona fano ga America netefatsa pele re a ko ntlenya economy gore di theo le di committee tsa rona tsa bomme tse di netefatsang gore bomme botseng wa tirisong dia dira monga ka modire molema fa o ka reng go areketla gona ke kwa ratlo eh le kwa tswaeng mme re semeletse gore re netefatse gore le kwa teng go di theotse dia dira me di dira sentle janore tsene mo metseletseleng ya IDP 
le di masipala tsotlhe tse di reporta potile mongaka me ra buisana go ra go dira eng ra tlakamano jano manwa o tlao a tsena mo khang e bidwang local economic development re dumalane ya na gore mo dingwa gentse tlhano tse re ang mo go tsona re tlogele go tlotla le go itlotlona ka go thusa bomme me re bue e le ka nnete re bue dilo tse di tshwaregang jano ngorona re le ngaka mo dire molema re se theo se se bidiwang water service authority ke gore ke rona be mba me tsitiro ya rona ke khelelo le soe sanitation tiro ya rona ke metsi me ka gongwe e ka tsenyeletsa tse di tswana le emergency services eh tse di tswana le di ambulance the fire eh eh engines and all that fire services and health services ke tiro ya rona madia ra diri samba ga etso mo karolong e ya metsi ya boitse ga ibila tsitsi banyamela Gona le economy e bomme re ya go leletsa gore le simolle go tlisa mogopolo le matlwa a lona mo go yona ke water economy le sanitation economy bomme ga bao mo tsetsa metsi me re dirisa di bilione ba ga etso mo ntlenye ya go tlisa metsi ra tlisetsa batho ya no re tse re tshwetso ya gore mo ngwageng o re tsena mo yona mo leano la di la pakatlano 5 year idp and district developmental model plan re tse re tshwetso ya gore re nne le bo mme ga re paletswe mo sidikeng sa rona ba di contracta bonyane ba le soma mabedi ba re tla se ka sekiwang ka bona we must be assessed ka bona gore bo mme ba irile ga re simolla ka July ra ba thusa go tsena mo mafarthateng a go dira ka metsi me ba sa tseni ba tsena bo khoba ile di subcontractors ka ora ha o batla go bogisa bo mme o ba bogise tsa ruri o ba dira di subcontractor tsa le ruri be ba na di imaging eh, forever ya no ri ri le re bola e mogwa o ra ga di contractor tsa bo mme mo le pateng la metsi ra ga di contractor tsa bo mme mo le pateng la sanitation eh ke selo se rang go sidira tse o ritse ring tshetso ya go ra go sidira selo se sung se re dumala neng ka sona ke ora ha o batla go bogisa bo mme o ba bogise tsa ruri ke gore o ba time maemo a mai a mai kwa tirong ya nore dumala ne gore ka di contracta tsa ba tsamaisi ba golo ba masipala di a khutla e re ga re thapa ba ba sha ba tsamaisi ba golo re netefatse gore go tle go nna le tekatekano ke gore ga re ba tla ba tsamaisi ba golo eh ba masipala ba sedika ha re ba tla ba le barataro bo golo ba nne boraro boraro ntle le mo bo mme ba kampe batla kwa go di moga bo mme bo re ba e kwa tlase ke selo se re ka eletsang gore motlhang re boelang kwano ra be re sa tla re sa tle go tlotla ra be re bodiwa gore ngaka mo dire molema ne le ri le ra go bona bo mme mo sanitation ba kai ne le ri le ra go bona bo mme ba di contracta mo metsing ba kai ne le ri le ra go bona bo mme e mo botsa maisi mbo golo ba kae jano ke ke maikano a rona le tiro e re ang go idira ne re re le re bue ka sekgwa sa fa gae ka hore ga e sa la re tsogeletse re bua sekgwa se se thata e bile re thibane ditsebe jano ne re re dilotse re di bue ka puo e re tlhaloganyang bokae bokae ne ba ga etso mme ke ma fa ka bo moke le modula stulo wa salga mo northwest ya no re le salga ga peretsweletse re maloba fa re tlomile commission ya bo mme ya women caucus ya province go netefatsa gore bo mme ba thusiwa ba natlafadiwa 
mi commissioner go tsa khoka seo ya bomme ya province ya go sala dilo tsentse ke bua ka tsona morago go netefatsa gore di a diragala ga di emele kopano e tswana le maitemogelo a rona re rutile gore ga go diragala dilo tse di maswe bomme le bana ke bona ba me ga mbobe go gaisa la itse lo tlerewetse ke matlotla pelo a merwalela ko bo dielpan vetpan makouspan brooksville lombats lachte limits e mabapi mi maitemogelo a rona ko ka hore re tsela ko ke gore batho ba ba amegile mbobe ke bo mmele bana jano go ra gore ga re ira na tlafatso e re se kamele kwa go bo mme ka gore ba tla re sireletsa le go tlhokomela bana ba rona jano ne re 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 tlefa ba gaetso re bue ka dilotse e tle re ga re boa gape eh le khone gore se ka se ka ka tsona ra le boga modula stool thank you very much No thank you very much. Thank you very much executive mayor. Mafokwa ga go a utlogetse. Then uh, without for senior nako eh bo me ba rona let me call on the HOD of safety. Ntate murule. Ntate murule. The platform is yours you are given only 10 minutes to complete your presentation. Deputy Chair, am I audible now? While we are still waiting for Ntate Murule to the oh. next speakers, councillors, please, you are given only 10 minutes. Let us stick to the 10 minutes that is allocated. We are guided by the standing rules nah, in this particular city. Ntate Murule. Deputy Speaker, I'm here. I don't know if I'm, I'm audible now. Thank you very much Dejodi. No no thanks. I was almost at the tail end of my presentation but I'll rush through it in 10 minutes and indicate that uh, we play as a department oversight role over the South African Police Act and we are empowered to do so by the National Civilian Secretariat Act. We are also empowered by the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. the police service act the domestic violence act the national development plan as well as the national crime prevention strategy deputy chair deputy speaker and uh, <clears throat> i was also reporting on the statistics for the year under review and indicated that uh, the rape violations have gone up by 16% from 2210 the previous year to 3136 for as at the last month then i wanted to indicate also deputy speaker that these figures are not inclusive of the last quarter of 2021 22 because we still are waiting the minister to release the statistics for the last quarter sexual assault has gone down by 7% chair from 363 the previous year to 360 nine this year and uh, attempted sexual offense have increased by 11% from 160 96 to 217 sexual offenses have gone up by 52% from 56% to 85% by april 2022 we are also glad to report that there's an increase of to 3000 777 from 3 3324 which is a cumulative increase of 14% and we also indicated as a department that for the financial year under review we have implemented campaigns on the prevention of gender based violence and femicide against vulnerable groups including including women and this things these activities we carried out in identified areas across the province and these uh, these areas are identified by the crime stats 
and the, the patterns as, as well as the trends that we get from SAPS relating to domestic violence. And these areas are spread geographically across the four districts of the province. We have uh, the area Bokobujanala, we have Breads and Tabani and BT, as well as Bitikong in Rastenberg. Mongaka, we have Mahikeng and Mabatu. Dr. RSM, we have Daung. Dr. KK, we have Ikahe in Pochestrum. Ikahe in Pochestrum, as well as Tlenzdorf. And uh, the following activities were also carried out in implementing the strategic plan on the gender-based violence, focusing on three pillars. And those pillars are prevention and rebuilding social cohesion, justice, society, protection, and economic power. In rebuilding, I mean, in preventing and rebuilding social cohesion, the campaigns, the, the campaigns were carried out through out the province in collaboration with stakeholders. And uh, we highlighted on the schedule of the gender-based violence throughout through community dialogues, engagement, peace marches, workshops, and distribution of 47 household safety gadgets and personal alarms to identify vulnerable women. Furthermore, a number of deep bushing activities to eliminate crime hotspots were carried out to ensure safety of women, children, and the community at large. This deep bushing is a, a campaign called environmental crime prevention through environmental design that the department carries out with the cooperation and collaboration of municipalities across the province. The department also mobilized community structures, including partnering with nonprofit organizations, which were funded to implement GBV and F programs ac across municipalities. A total number of 35 nonprofit organizations were funded to implement crime prevention programs, and a total of 1,271,000 was disbursed to these NPOs and NPIs. Justice and safety, Chairperson, the department provided oversight on the SEPS on the implementation of the Domestic Violence Act to ensure that, they, to ensure that the SAPS complies with and implements the provisions of the Domestic Violence Act in protecting victims of the domestic violence. In so doing, we visited 83 police stations across the province and monitored and recommendations were made to the SAPS to implement. And these uh, recommendations were guessed toward ensuring that SAPS improves on the service that they render to our people. These recommendations among others included training members on implementation of Domestic Violence Act, as well as dissemination of information to members of the community through presentations and distribution of pamphlets during awareness campaigns related to domestic violence. The department through the National Secretariat initiated a program called Court Watch Briefs, which entails visiting police stations and checking on whether the SAPS com conforms to its standard related to the provisions of, uh, of uh, Domestic Violence Act. And uh, this court watch briefs were undertaken in 20 magistrate courts in the province. And this was done to monitor dockets, more specifically dockets related to domestic violence related cases that had been withdrawn, withdrawn at court due to SAPS inefficiencies and ineffectiveness. And these court watch briefs that were conducted are meant to ensure that SAPS correct the inefficiencies that we picked up during our monitoring of the, of the police stations. And uh, the department assisted, that means this also, the coach word briefs, assist the department in dealing with service delivery related complaints from community members against the, the SAPS. And one of the anomalies or shortcomings that we found during the court watch briefs is that that we found out is that uh, cases not brought to court two days before the, to enable the prosecutor to prepare. Most in most instances, 
cases were not brought to court in time, according to the standard of the SAPS. One of the findings was that investigating officers were not available to oppose bail. That is why it was easy in most instances for, for people who are alleged to be perpetrators of sexual assault cases would be granted bail. And one of the challenges also that we picked up was that the accused were not brought on time to court or they were in some instances totally not brought to court for appearance. And some of the matters were withdrawn or struck off the roll due to insufficient evidence or inefficiencies by SAPS by not implementing directives of the prosecutor and poor investigations. On economic power chairperson, the department has targeted to empower and improve livelihoods of vulnerable women and youth in the province. And ensuring that women were empowered economically, the department too included a total of 178 women in the expanded public works program as part of community safety patrollers in the four districts. And furthermore, among the, the, the funded nonprofit organizations or institutions, five of them belonged to women and the fund was specifically for the implementation of crime prevention initiatives and fighting gender-based violence. In conclusion, Deputy Chairperson and the, the, the Deputy Speaker, the department in the province continues to support the implementation of Women's Charter for Accelerated Development with regard to, 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 to gender-based violence. At a technical level also, Chairperson, it is important to report that the department has begun engagement with the department with the sister department of social development to build a closer collaboration and cooperation in, in ensuring that the work that both departments undertake is enhanced to, to make sure that the implementation of the Gender-Based Violence Act is realized. Thank you, Chairperson. We welcome your presentation, but uh, for the next session, please kindly make sure that um, uh, you are physical, number one, as an indication that you take uh, Basadi Silas in our, in our province, please. Uh, without wasting any time, Councillor Nikuenam, the platform is yours. And then I've just realized, uh, Deputy Chair, according to the program that um, for the councillors, actually they are giving only five minutes, not 10 minutes. Okay, can we give you the seven minutes? Okay, for councillor Nick, you will be given seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, 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 Honorable Lucas. Now, seven minutes is too little, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, you know, you know how much I can speak, but we know you from very far. Then why? <laughs> um, I'm not going to do justice. What we'll do, honourable members who are uh, uh, leading the procession, uh, honourable leadership, MECs, officers of various departments in the province, our distinguished honourable members who are mandate givers. Let me appreciate all of us officials and my councillors from local government, members of the legislature who are here. Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable Chair, if you allow me, we will give you the full presentation consolidated on behalf of the district in relation to the thematic areas that we needed to report about. Um, on the ground, the limited resources there in Alitone district. I am proud to indicate that Matosana Local Municipality, JB Max Local Municipality, and the District Municipality of Dr. Kenneth Gaund, Banali the governance structures, Koba Kopanangteng, Lebahi, Hotua Tua di Lotay Longhore di Affecta, Bombe, Lebana Baron, including the program at the Longhore that will have to implement on a yearly basis. Honale le tohana la budget, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Kilibiza le tohana la budget. Because I know that in the district municipality, our budget is less than a million rand. Same applies to JB Max, 
same applies to Matlasana. Mare re khona gore ka madiao re fande di initiative se tse di diriwang ke di SMM itsarona from our various constituencies. Re ba yetletsa ka di tlhoko tse bana le tsone whether ke equipment eh ke startup capital eh maloba re ne re fa ba bangwe re ba fa di tlhokego tse ba di batla re delivera o mong a re na ke batla gore ke dire landscaping re be re murekela michini re murekela dilo tsotlhe tsa di tlhokang gore ye ne le batho ba gage ga ba ya go dira be bana le dilo tseo some of them are in the sewing industry some of them are in the welding industry at small scale at bigger scale our in our approach is to partner with the department of um, economic development in the province so that we unleash more potential. In terms of governance, I'm going to leave the demographics, the population, and issues of, of gender and race. Kodi maspaleng zarona zetharoti. Kona le employment is sufficient. Kukong hai miti di requirements mare sufficient. Bomme bateng ba hirilwe in positions of authority. As a, either a senior manager, senior managers, middle managers, but Babona, and the statistics are indicated, including at a district level. Um, in terms of gender machinery, in terms of engaging and unleashing the potential. Komatosana, Ko JB Maxi, Liko Dr. Kenneth Kaund. Um, in terms of planning and budgeting, from the source of an institutional budget, Yahore. Batu ba ba di ba ba tla kudira di quotations ba tu ba ba tla kure ba kreye di tenda zedi tona. Koma tla sana kuna liko idira halanteng liko JB Max. Ko Dr Kenneth Kaunda because of the limited budget, we don't have major project uh, honourable chair where we can take massively women and give them the opportunity that they deserve. But through the repositioning at district development model, and the fact that we are going to be approaching uh, the presidency to give us more funding. As a district that contributed to the economy in the last 400 years, which is now through our gold, uh, ex, uh, you know, uh, production and gold extraction, our economy is not growing. So we ought to look into diversifying through agriculture, tourism, economic development, and we need special funding for that so that women are at the center because. Reduce kadi kopo zedi nzita bomne at a high level and massive level where we can give them the required uh, indication. Rena le schedule sadi events ite ridi dirang on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, and celebrating specific days. Uh, Honourable Chair, in conclusion, kona le maspala yaruna ekhota. Akere ra kopola kore Dr. Kenneth Kaunda diwa kidi maspala zetar. Ke JB Maxi ke matwasani le matwasi hills. Rena le challenges of instability komakwasi hills we could not source the report to incorporate it however i itse gore go na le tironyana entse ba idira e ile gore re nka be re khone gore re diragatse me hela mc o tla dumalana le nna gore mo malatsing a fitile ga ise go tle go nne le tiro go di kantorong tseo ka gone go na le go ya tsaetsae ga ga di issues that are relating to um, challenges in the institutions of governance and administration. In conclusion, honorable chair and members, we are saying, ra komita, ri le di mayor a tse dintsha, le di MMC tse dintsha, le di administration in tsarona gore through IGR forums. Tse leng gore honorable chair, we have agreed that IGR must be appear in the performance contracts of our managers. So that it does not become an issue, but it must be an issue I have to integrate. It will assist us in uh, consolidated targeting and integrated targeting, planning, implementation, and maximizing impact on the ground. But we are also looking at incubation hubs. a dream or initiative, throughout so that to the other side. Because that's the incubation program. Collectively as a district, we're going to be doing to change the situation. Let me take this opportunity and say, the biggest issue, the biggest issue, the the type of nuclear families that we get today, are different from extended nuclear families of yesterday. 
ha ke le 20 ke na le ngwana ke parenti wa ke na le 20 years ke mama le rakhadi le mamogolo but now our young people of 20 years ona le rdp house udula le boyfriend ona le bana they do all sorts of things in the household whilst the child is watching now we are contaminating that mind of the child which is innocent and the only way mc ke gore let's massify the parent support networks harika i change in the value system where it starts in the household and we don't see what is happening in the household then we are able to nip it in the bud mc ratla really district are di leke re batle bomme ba ne ba le dinese people whom we know that they've got values in parenting let's impart the knowledge of what is parenting go tsala ngwana gore gore o motsadi ke a leboga thank you thank you thank you very much councillor niki enam yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, um, Councillor uh, Nick Wenam. The advantage about today's sitting um, Majoru is that the MEC of Kogta, she is also acting as the premier. So meaning that today she can make some influence. Yes. At, yes. So we're yes. going to take advantage of that. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Without wasting any time, on behalf of Dr. Ruth Mukhomuti Mumpati, uh, Councillor Maje is here, who is the mayor of Dr. Ruth Mukhomuti Mumpati. The platform is your Majoro. 80 box, splinter me. Thank, thank you, uh, Program Director. Let me acknowledge and greet the deputy chairperson of the NCOP, the chairperson of this, and I deploy you to Dr. Ruth Homusi Mumpati. We see we see men um almost far additional two minutes, I can go ten minutes. But because she's from Dr. Ruth, she may even say I give you 15 minutes because we are from uh, and then uh, let Ireke acknowledge ya hape mo tsa maisa modula stilo wa letsatsela go mpieno me batlet eh ke acknowledge me motsumi the deputy speaker wa go kwano theo molao ya rona ya mo bokone go phirima ke dumelise ke ntse go tla re mo lepe asa asa dumelise mo premier wa rona wa na mo sa tshwere mele na mmiga ya bo meya ra ba ba gone ba ba golwane ma councillor ra o tle a gone eh le batla batla kiro ba letsa tsila go mpieno deputy chair of the ncop the presentation from dr rusi gomotsi mompati has been submitted and for the sake of time i will deviate a bit from following the presentation it is been tabled uh, with the assurance that the deputy chair in his uh, spare time will go, have an opportunity to go through it. Bahaisu Kirke Kudinta, Pisehel on Sakopano, eh? Take Kupilu and Horeke Behele, Copano Katona, Elen Horeaka, Lesseteo, Sa Masapalawasi Dika, Wangakas Homusi Mumpati. Hai Salemu Wahem, O Tudile, Redirecting Bomaro, Na Bailum or by Chora Kafabo Hale. Me in a truly nan, me was at the lake on a sink, Beha Kayoli. More than in Lake Hori, more strategy in Sessin Chasses, Sessin Gamu President Warona, His Excellency Honorable President Serel Matamela Ramaposa, La DGM, Bomer Babona Bata Karoyan, Yanuruna Lenaka, Homusi Mumpati. Reare, eh, rehedi zero na yaka sidika ku developa our our district one plan. Mo plan e ya rona ritile ku babo memo kare haliti relo teri tere ku disita mo lolela. 
nngwe ya dikatalitic project tsa rona ke palhards eh dam e tle go developiwa mo palhards eh dam e tle go developa re na le ditshono di ka na makgolo a le mararo tsa ditiro tse ditle go nna ba ba nngwe lwa ba ba golo mo ditiro ntse e tla nna bo mme ba rona re a re a re a i re a re a itlama re bo a mo le nani la rona le re setseng re le feditse re bone go le matshwane di gore le senyeletse manane a go a go le bagana le tshotla ka go ya bo mme ka nako le nako a re direla ditiro tse mo gare ga manane a rona re nne le manane a buang ka tshotla ka go ya bo mme re a re district development model ga e tla be sa felela ha ile gore mo di work streaming tsa rona ga re na bo mme ba ba eteletse mpidi di work streaming tse ka ga ya no mo di work streaming tse di tle go buang ka bo mme ka basha ka batho ba tshelang ka bogole re tla etelwa pele ke bo mme re lenga ka se go motse mo mpati eh re tshotse re re tshotse maikano bile re re motho o tlo go mpiene go bega gore mo lenane la rona le le la IDP re ntse re beile di khatlego tsa bo mme mo ga re ga ditirelo tse re ntse re di setla molela ya no re tla di bontsa ka tsela e rileng mo local economic development plan ya masepala re ntse re na le re beetse go thoko lidi le le kanang ka 4 million go ela tlhokwa gore ditheo tsa bo mme tse di leng go bogolo segolo go te mothuong tse di leng go bojanala di bona ke monokeng me ke monokeng yeo re ntse re ba enela ka mokgwa wa go ba thusa ka di go nela na ka di tlabakelo tsa go tsweletsa ke mothuo go pele ka go ba nela ka marketing bogolo segolo yang mo 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 bo jana leng jwa rona go itlela ya no re bega gore re na le bo mme ba le 33 ba re ba supportileng through led ya masepala wa sidika sanga ka se go motse mo mpati go itlela ya no re bega gore re na le bo mme ba le 50 ba re ba emennokeng mo bo jana le eng go tswa go sidikeng sa nga ka se go motse mo mpati re lena ka se go motse mo mpati re bua re ma fa pele ga go kwano e re be ga gore re be ga gore go na le dikampani tsa bo mme tse di leng mashoma mabedi le borataro tse di unwetsweng mo di sitlamololelo ya ditirelo tse re ntse re di neelana tse di umetjeng go itlela ya no le di le le lekana le 36.1 million re lena ga se go motse mo pati re re bega go mpiene gore mo tirelo mo go tsiriganyeng ga di tirelo tse leng gore dira di sitla molela mo bagim ba rona re ntse re beile a gare go nela na ka di sanitary towel re beile a gare go nela na ka school uniform me re tshotse maikano a gore kgwedi ya bo mme re tlane re kitika ka nako le nako me motlatsa modula stilo wa NCOP ha a simolola kwa pano e o buile ka ditirelo di tshwana le metsi gore bo mme ba hakae mo tirelo e ya ka ile bone ba e tshwarang ka fa bogaleng ha re tsena go magaeng rona le lenaka se go motse mo mpati re are re setla mololela metsi mo magaeng le di maspala tse di ridika di kileng me ha re setla mololela metsi ya no re la tlhoko gore bo mme ke ba tsa ka rolo mo ba thumba ba unwelwang mo go setla molele metsi ba go itlela ya no re be ga ya ana gore go glo dina go re setla molela rural water supply gone re na le bo mme ba ile ba thapiwa 
ba le bararo mo tirelo ye ri sitla molela nye pole tlapong ga se busho go re sitla molela metsi gone go tau re na le bomme ba bane ba ba tsa yang karolo mo go sitla molele metsi go ya go bathumba rona go amalia mo maspaleng wa wa mamusa re na le bomme ba le le shome ba ba tsa yang karolo mo sitla molelo ye ya metsi e Eh module mo tsamaisa tiro ha ke feleletsa ke ne ke re ke bege gore eh go mo manani nga rona mo gare ga manana a rona a go ela tlhoko gore re se ma re ne pa gana le tshotla ka go ya bo mme tlhekefatjo ya bo mme re le se theo sana ka se go motsi mo mpadi e tla re kgwedi e latelang e tloga e roga ha e le malatsi a le le shoma mabedi le bone re be re tlhoma ya lo local drug aids committee go re tle ri thuse go semagana le go lepatibana le bo tlhoka tsebe jo re le ba gane le jone jo ke a le boga thank you very much thank you very much to my executive mayor we will we will we will do that uh, uh, thing of of giving you uh, favors at home ka kokumeng they will we will do it <laughs> now it is uh, the the last mayor that we will request to speak we've got four districts in our province is a, is from bojanala district the mayor of mosos kotane council and kefun kotswe she will be do it on behalf of the executive mayor malibongwe akisimulle ka go tsa tlotlo ke ife deputy chairperson ya rona me silvia lucas ke tsa tlotlo ke ise go bo mc bo tleba ba lenteng ke tsa tlotlo ke ise gape go re sona kile go nna le rona fa ke tsa tlotlo ke fe di bo majoro bo tleba re nna le bone fano ja ka go tlile re khumalo re molefe me nikiwe jalo jalo ke tsa tlotlo ke romele go bo councilor ba rona ba ba le mfa motsatsi la go mpiele mo go le ba ba rumilweng go tla go kopana le bo mme ka tsatsi la go mpiele ke re ba gaetsho dumela ke fa mo go emong ba me matlakala tota ke tle ka dikhantsa kwa rona tsa Moses Kotani ma rona me matlakala o ka ba alefa ka go tlhoka le sego go nile le leso la ga ntate se le bogo o ile go ya makoloso la ga ntate se le bogo tsa maile le MMC me aniki se le bogo ke re re dirile ra leka re letsa gore go dira ga le dilo tse dintle re letsa gore re batla gore DDM e a tlege go bujanala ke ka mo re tshwaragane le mmatlakala re tshwaragane le EM go bujanala mo motseng wa mogalwane go bontsha gore go ntse go na le tsolo pele go na le bakery e sa leng e tlile ke solofela gore mokhuri thamaga le na mega o tla ga kologelo ka nako ya gane mogalwane e le pilot project ya ha president be kari ele e teng san city tsentse le tsogo maspala o tsentse le tsogo province tsentse le tsogo e tsweletse bo mme ba dira bo mme ba bere ka ba rekisa borotho ba bone a se fela bone ba rekisa borotho ba bone le phata la rona la local economic development ko maspala wa moses kotani le dikile mo wa gentse pedi tse di fitile le file bo mmele bo ntate ba ba bakeng ba ba duba maroto di bake di oven tsa gase le di stofo tsa gase gore e re mo mosong fa wa re ke sa di papatha tsa ba ele e be le tsa ba di diretseng ba thusitswe ke le fapala LED ke na tsa fatso ya bo me women empowerment re tsa ga pere le bele ga pele mo construction ko construction e ga ke bua le lona jana Renale me a very young 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 lady 
oil mo construction ning u busy ka paving ya go phalane go tuela gape re na gape le bomme ga re tsana go le fapheng la agriculture ba ba le ma me wa rona o ineng le female fama ya sunflower ke me wa go khaya kholo re ni le gape le bomme rona dikologa ya rona e na le di mine ne e mo rural ke mitse selegae re na le bomme ba ba itshidisang ba ba itirelang ba ba neng ka thuso ya ner bomme le na ga kitsora ka ntso ga kologelwa ba khona go kira di thuso ba ruile di kudi ba ruile di khomo ba ruile di kolo maphelo a bona a tswela pele tsa tsile lengwe le 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 re go ntse go ntse jalo re be re na ga pele tourism ka go le tlhakore le le la rona segolo jang ko mogwase bontsi ba di ntlutsele di etele tsopile ke bomme di ranwa ke bomme le ga bo re ba le teng ba se ya me ba tla ka di quad bike ra ba ga mara di kologa mara ko bofelo ro ikhutsa re fiwa di jol di tsotso tle ke bomme re be re ya ko le fa phende le botlhoko tlhoko jano gbv re na le di case tse di snampalo tota le maabane le maabane re ne re be gelwa mo mosong re dirisana thata le di crisis center tse di mo police station police station na mo kha se ba re be gela ka ntate o fetsang gore ipa ngwana wa gagwe mo mosong go wa skolo ke mathata re na lloy re tshwanetse rona ja ka di masipal re ba tshegetse re se ke ra ba tlogella re tsa mae le bone ro go thusa go gomotsana le go buisana le bomme ba le gore se nna ka dilo tse di botlhoko buwa buela ko ntle tsarisa rre a se ka go tshosetsa e a tsa mae na nne kwa wena o tswele ka gore mmene o itshora ka fobogale ba ga e tshora re mosadi moka o nya le mariga re tenda di case tseo re na gape le thuso e tshwanang le a bo re thabang se photo go tswa ka ko muruleng ke so lefela ba lo tlhele moitse o le ka gore thusa ra thusana go na le bana ba rona ba ba tsubang dilo tse di sanang sentle ba ba tsile motseleng wa ba tsa re thusana le ka counseling ke o le le o le o utlwang me gona ga go anniwa fela go na le se se dirwang mo khedin tse pedi nyana tse tharo tse di fitileng re nile le ngwana o neng a la tlhega ka nako ya christmas ngwana lo timetse se se botlhoko ke gore ra leka re kopa thuso me o le o le ka ba e all means go amogela go thata ke bua le lona jana o la tlhagetse ke tiro e bile tshoro ke stroke ga gone go amogela bo ma go botlhoko a re tshwaraganeng a re tshegetsaneng a se ka re fa go diragalla o mongwe ke be ke le bala kgotsa ke be ke tshega se se diragalla motho o mongwe ka setswana ra re ga se ntone ke gore le nna sa khone ga mo nna ya neng ke ne ke re ra le ka go bujana re na le bomme ba leng go mining ba bana le di company tse di tsenang ka go class ba ba sitang le mo di kopanong tse di maleba ka ntla ya gore re na le di mine tse di ntsi me se se leng teng fela ke gore ke ne ke re ke se ke kaela tswa bodi ke fellefa ke a le bogame mo tsamaisa Malibongwe. No, thank you very much to all the district um, mayors who represented their constituencies very well. But in the next session, honourable councillors, we want numbers. Rebata kuri tu kure how many women balance mu the sector and three different leaders and kure bolela tone. We want action, honourable councillors. No, thank you very much. And also, you have proved, uh, honourable uh, deputy chair, the councillors have proved, mayors have proved that indeed, as a South Africa and in Northwest Pese, we have improved in terms of corporate governance because in all their presentation, Konan Mobile Akhelang departments to say that Bakon Noko Kradi Tuso in different departments. So it means that we are doing well in corporate governance without wasting any time. I'm going to call on the acting HOD of Cocta, Mewarona, Mamorena Lehoko. Hansi Asenda to the stage. Make you go back only two minutes for stretching. Just to stretch. I know that I'm not a doctor, uh, deputy chair, but. Uh, <laughs>
Common sense it takes. The chair of the day, Melu Kasi, Gitom Pebo MEC Vote, Gitom Pehaben, Datesonaikile, Gitom Pebo Mayarabo Majoroba Lenguano, Gidumedise Hape, the Toho Tama Fapa, Gidumedise Bo Manejara, Hotokoma Fapeng Oteli di Maspala, Gidumedise Hape, Bom Melebo Rebelin Ting, Lizatin Lacajeno, Galudumedisa Malibongue. Hotwa kole fapeng la cooperative governance and traditional affairs katla seha bukudu tamaha ba me nomza malina miha kirata hobeha reporto ya department de as follows. Pilin kato la pili kirata hotalo sa hore tiro ya department de arona e eleng ya kokta e Ama isiwa kemola wa section 154, section 152, as well as the TKLA Act, and also milawana eming e dirang horo rona rele fapa re matafate di maspala re ba katise ibile rele belele kamo ba tisang di tiro lokateng komete selehae komakeshening jalo jalo. Me kitobua in context of the support that we give to municipalities as a department, and also in our support. Committee Selehai and Katasaha, a Mahosi Aruna at Utahang. Department has been working very hard to resolve matters in municipalities where there has been instability because this has been affecting basic service delivery, particularly women and children. Rotera Itoraha, Maspalaruna, Asenata Maiso Etsin Sinte. A Hahona di Tirolo Tent in Saint Lemo Maspale, Mega Hona Seo, Sidira Horobome, Basifit Helu Gidi Tiro, Basifit Helu Gidi Tirelo, and Maspala. Department has also been supporting and monitoring municipalities on provision of basic services. Hore Maspala Anele, a Baahi Mates, a Anele Baahi Mato, Anele Baahi, a Motagasi, Lidi Tirolo Zedin. Department de a cocta, a twenty level a lower can nati. The lots all heads of my jorobans about the bua de adireha. Make a rata hot arch who no egeri. Hotacole for pain. Ritlo hot aya di planet or heads of maspala, libo major baronabana babua catona. Ridi level a la rebona hore nagin nati de adireha. Lohore a hot or moholona. Leleba a hi a libona honali di peto hona. Nemo hona lima tata ting. Kimoro to tenan ting. Reberi Buisa na le maspala re ra rabo la matatao. Department is working very hard on disaster management. We have recently met with different municipalities on their disaster management plans and reviewing also the fire services in the different municipalities. Re nile lidi incidente tse lo horo hona hosha hose na meetsi meseo hasa re tsa sentere le Department, the Rilera Romela team, 
ko di maspale mo go nile le di incident tse di leng jalo ga di ruwa ripoto mere bere ka ka thata go bona hore ra rabolla bothata bo hore di maspala di nile le di tirelo tsa go tima melelo jalo jalo di maspala tse ding re setse re di reketse di fire engine and so on so that ba gona hore ba timemello and then department ya rona has also been conducting assessment that the IDP Janon Kahoro di Maspala will be doing the new uh, IDPs for the financial year in, in Chayabona. We will then be giving the municipalities guidelines to ensure that they engender their plans. Ki tu metse tata ho utla hore di Maspala ba ntse ba bua ka mo di tirolo tsa bona di tlo tsengwa mo di IDP di tirolo tse le mmale ba kwa go bo mmele bana di tlo tsengwa mo di IDP so that rona re le department re gona go lebella hore go na le progress ka se se diriwang. Re lebella tsa hore eh ho tswa go le faphen di Maspala tse dintsi bana le se re sibitsang di gender desk. Moleng hore ha go na le mathata ko malapeng me a ka gona fa ko maspala kwa go bega gore mathata ke e mara re lebeletse hore batho ba leng hore they are working on those gender desks ba 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 bona bo majoro they are not sitting at management structures so they need to have influence at that level so that ba gona go influence the decision ba tlise di tletlebo tsa bo mme ba di tlise ko management level ba tlise di tletlebo tsa di tirelo so that re gona gore re nne le information e feletseng re le nne tsa hape gore re le department e harakara dira sentle ka go nela ditiro eh to emerging businesses re le mogolo re le baka ke gore when we advertise we should step up the effort our re advertise e di tirelo tsa rona tsa di tender yalo le yalo because when we check we could see that we do not have a ha re se re fitlhelle bo mme ba ileng gore ba tshwere di tender ya 500,000 or so mar le gona re le department we don't work with very big tenders what we do is we work to support municipalities who are then having uh, various services and are also uh, working on uh, outsourcing their services where it may be necessary our department has also been working with the national department of cooperative governance and public works we have identified training interventions and partnership on exit opportunities on the community works program to date remototo to uh, to also uh, indicatory we have created uh, working opportunities for about 21200 young people employed in the various programs of municipalities that is one and the home based care to establish community gardens and so on and also the educating uh, assist, uh, the educators kodikolong and so on under the cwp program Relele for power we have also been having empowerment session internally for both men and women in the department that has opened our eyes because before we come to the workplace we are people that come from communities isn't it so ha re sa tlhokomele bo mme go le fapeng ha re sa khone go tlhokomela bo re go le fapeng ha ba ya hae ba tsa maka di frustration that it's one from the workplace and we are serious in the department to implement that program to date we have also ensured that we have a women's program in the department we have a women's forum we even have a men's forum we've been working hard with other ngos in promoting gender empowerment even within the workplace in the department um we have picked up that there are cases that we need to deal with of sexual harassment we know that there has been amendment to that policy and we want to workshop not only ourselves but also work in partnership with municipalities to raise awareness bana ba rona ba ba setsana they don't even understand sometimes what sexual harassment is and would become vulnerable because yano ba tsa advantage ka bona ba le ba ntlenyane and you find that ngwana o nna le mathata ana sa itse gore di otseo a setse di siameng We've been holding workshops for young people in the department on career development and we also want to partner with municipalities to have workshops 
for young people and young women on career development. Ridirile GBV awareness, three campaigns in various uh, tribal municipalities to bring awareness on gender-based violence. Ritume Tsehormahosi Aruna are in the forefront of the GBV campaign and are raising community and are raising awareness in our various communities. On the DDM, we have noted as a department, Hori, information Aruna, our data was not disaggregated enough to give us a perspective of the profiling and the demographics of a particular district. We have then assigned ourselves a subcommittee that will be working on demography and the mainstreaming of gender information in the DTM plans. In that regard, to represent today the issues of the department with regards to gender and also the reporting uh, Thank you very much, Acting HOT. Uh, I'll call on uh, on behalf of the Premier of the Northwest Provincial, I mean province. I'll call on the Acting Premier of the Northwest Province, Mewaru Namututehi Lena. No, thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, okay. No, thanks very much. Uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, I, I receive. <laughs> Thank you very much, the Deputy Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, uh, Honorable Sylvia Lucas, and the Honorable Member, uh, Comrade Barbara, who has accompanied you, and also the Member of the National Council of Provinces to the executive mayors who are present here, the members of the legislature, Honorable Sonakile, and my colleague, uh, Honorable Member uh, Muilwa. Uh, thanks very much and good day, Honorable Members. I must indicate, uh, Honorable Deputy Chair, that on behalf of the Premier of the province, we are happy that uh, today happened and is successful. We return to the Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Honorable Deputy Speaker, and the team, the reporter area. But also what pleases us a lot, as the province, all departments managed to report. I think we must give the departments a round of applause. But secondly, also that all the districts managed to report. And we must appreciate the report here, district here, here Bujanala Ekavarileng Agriculture, because I think mistakenly so our program it looks at agriculture and there's a lot that is happening. Co agriculture selling for benefits bomb much more than any other department in the province. And we must congratulate also the honorable member Mohono for the whole work. AID Rang Co Agriculture Fatza Hor Bom Mebaruna Batakarulo. We all know. Um, much as we appreciate Honorable Deputy Chair, the work that we are doing, we must indicate also that we've got concerns, especially in the level that we must pass. And I'm saying this on the basis of what the Honorable Mayor from Moses Kotani said. 
قربان معر چارخنی رنالی دی مسپالا چه تلانو چه لن خوری دی رفت خوبا براغ این برا رو با دی مسپالا چه دی تلو چو پلی که بوم نه یعنی you ask yourself خوری ها بوم نه Bahuna who rise against Bumme Baba. What is it that they are saying to this women's parliament and also generally Bumme Bailen who are by the Let's Appeal? If me omwe a Hona Hori Munsheng Litzingena Kimula is our thing or Rumelang on the ground. Marhapi re me la yang bom me babang runa jaka bom me babay telejbil. Ha sindromo eka na bay bizayin pull head down. Ha in na khore ar khona khoye ma hela rile bom me re re hee. Musa doa ajwe o ki batla khuse. Ha sara buise ngle. Especially aka province ya bukone bupiram. Dilo tse di ngwe. Rato hansi khore rile ka kabu jotle khore khadidra khali mo north west. Because har tsama out there. Rebona la yaka province e karengi buku wa ena ba itele di pili du la ena le matata you know di lote tote zi at least for once kwenye na hela re re ha ilu kuri matata ati rebula leng kuri matata uki remu tuse remu lemu se remu natla fasi kuya kupi not to have the situation Ernangliona, for an example, go Kakisanum Lob, local municipality, executive mayor Maji. Hora as a woman, Ukhana Hore, Ore, Hote, Rabatak Monsar Zingawa, and Obos Ureke Amavila Bore. What is that? What is that? The Lotel shames and the Lotel Kid Lotel and Hor mainly. Honorable Deputy Speaker, more responsibility in your organization. Why is this happening? What is this that you are doing? Renela Nagamata, Power Elukri Ilwezi Kabutat. Maraho Hahur regret democracy. Rebera Riano Rayam, a bomb member Rayam, I know Lernayan, Trokul and Layabome. And then in the process, the whole bomb me barlo anele but shoko mele hori. In senior manager study department, and honorable Kumalo said it, ba komi da hori. O leveling ya district ya bone at senior management level, ba kwen shora hori. If it is six, they would have to have three ya bomb me ba occupy those positions. Ebe na rona bomb me barering rahana. It can only be it when it is myself and not honorable. Uh, executive mayor, uh, no. why is it that that is happening? So, Kidlo Zedin Zelenkore, as part of, of the province, we really are hoping that we will find to get them to come to an end. You know, when I, when I look at uh, the participants here, Honorable Deputy, uh, Deputy Chair. Kibona ba usma kiwa ko doctor Ruth Sikhomu Simpati kibona ba usme ibole ba kumafike ba meba ba rekodi sisi in some of us. At that time they were singing the Rapela fifty percent siaya e parliament, and we were coming mumra kabone and it happened. And it happened at the level of parliament. Currently, we are having. A well represented parliament, a, 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 a well representation, a parliament. And that's why we are sitting, honorable member, deputy chairperson. Like, who knows that at some point we will have a deputy chairperson of the National Council of Provinces? <laughs> we, we continued as we grew up, uh, uh, honorable Nikki, where you know. That Bomme then further said, we must then sing that Malibong with Gamala Makosigas. And if it was not of COVID, we'll be singing that slogan. Because some of us are strengthening the it's all in Malibong with Gamala Makosigas. 
Now, why is it that when it comes to positions, you want to bomb that? Because there's not that kind of a slogan, Honorable Kumalo, you know that. Aliyo, Aliyo, Malibongo, and Let it be at least for once. Because as women would have taken a position that women first, and they will come after. Because it can't be, it can't be that it is business as usual. It cannot be that people don't want to accept change, that women are able to influence decisions if women are able and have got the necessary capacity that this democratic country wants. So we are calling on all women that with all we need to hold hands as women and move forward. And I'm sure ensure that of all the provinces, it will be the Northwest province that comes out high in ensuring the empowerment of women moving forward. But also as I table the presentation as prepared on behalf of the premier. And I think by presenting before by indicating from the deputy chairperson, of the National Council of Provinces. How do you plan? 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 But we are still saying as women continue We will continue because that's who, that's who women are. And kese tole kuru mudimur dirle ya alwa giri. So rita zwe la khudira dilo tselen khuri disiyame tse malaparo na disiyame tse mbanabaro na. You know, Honorable Nikki was says a very a touching point that says how unilele ngwana at 20 years. It doesn't necessarily mean umutad. Anyway, it doesn't mean ume. It doesn't mean you are a parent. It is a lele who to see one matata out lega on air, le who hodi see one mohole, one out of the thing for a road to Sahore, ask a dira posu to when I did really. Now that program, obviously, on our, my my co, uh, my colleague, Honorable Muilo, would have to run with that, with that, with that uh, campaign. Yeah, how do we ensure that uh, really we build a parenting networks, as Honorable uh, Nikki we have indicated, so that rakona kule musa na le banabaro na kuri, kona. Huna Linguana, Hore Huruna, Sonal Magarabe, Ble Hore Hore, Ugan, Tola Tong Gilma, Gahore, Janona Linguana, Kotawana Hana Hore, Regat Zenam Moho, a Mompetu, Huba, Gupi, Gugua, Bargum Kahore, a Yano on a Linguana. Let's allow ourselves as young girls, as young women, to grow up properly and be led they know where this country come from and what does it mean when we say at the main perfect look at this triple challenge but that's actually hit from long ago 
Now, what is been done go Office of the Premier as part of ensuring that uh, this gender mainstreaming happens? Officer Premier assessor the APPs, annual performance plans to all the departments. Who ensure or a honor who trace indeed. Or the department is a totally the honor who accommodate the little who disa boom me barona go in their different uh, departments. And where challenges are experienced in terms of that, obviously it has been indicated that go and improve. Those who know Honorable Sonakile will tell you many of the departments, they appear really more than three times go to portfolio committee simply because of the level eba eleng gore ba assess this perform the annual performance plans and ensure that they get to be improved moving forward because harsana chance engwe it's we must utilize this opportunity you know the honorable speaker uh, in absentia said uh, in in one uh, of the meetings gore it is this annual performance plans the chance for the ensure gore the bonds had change and convince our communities to go and vote come the next uh, uh, elections. So that is why Ellen Hori, Officer Premier is ensuring that he assessor and ensure that when these plans are approved, uh, the plans that are indeed going to change lives of the people, but at the most, Mapilo, Abu Mebarona in all our districts in the province. And also, as we talk to uh, the, 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 the Office of the Premier, it will be, it will be currently a review of the structure, the organizational structure, with an intention to ensure that we achieve this gender mainstreaming that we are talking about. Now, I know they must know that priority is going to be given uh, to women and they must accept that priority will be given uh, to women moving forward. What we also must indicate and which is key and also has appeared in the presentation at Provincial Treasure and what, what the deputy speaker is also talking about. If you can't count it, it's not done. By one thing. If you can't count it, it's not done. This is a one of Lelela Hore, Gibbon Mababa Gai, Le Hore Gimadia Magai, our beds in Gotuk, Hora Horasu de Recipe. Now Gidlo Zelen Hore, Hulega, Ho Natla Faza, Leho and Sora for all the departments, does budget for the companies above me, Zedi Holang Tata Tata. Officer Premier at Lakomela Horhona Lili de Lele specific Lelon Hore Libele Togo Ke the department Ho Tokomela Horbome Baho de Sua moving forward. I know Horogo Human Settlement, for an example, resigned Lele Memorandum of Understanding, Lisa Week, South African Women in Construction. Hore in the budget of the department, but benefit a 40%. Now, 40% uh, might not be enough. Maybe that's why Lisa Upele Macho might not be enough. The most may be able to get 50%. Yeah, but my 40, I'm going to go to the But we are moving towards 50% indeed, which we will then improve uh, even in terms of that memorandum of resigning them. But what is key to go to the Bane ba sa bona gale go pegopela mo construction. Go di dilotse tsa bo stena le daka le le plastering ke dilotse bo rre not in the current government and it has proven that bomme bana le bokgone le go feta. You know we are sitting at the blocked projects. Many of the blocked projects ke tsene bo di dirwa ke bontate dan tse di dirwa ke bomme. Simply because bomme could stand up and say even if we don't have that quantum, but we will ensure that project that we fill in, I will do it, complete it, and hand it over to the to the department. And we thank those women for the work done in terms of that.
But also we must report Hora, from the office of the premier, the women owned companies who benefited from gender responsive procurement increased from 7.15% to 9.16%, which shows Hore Honali determination in ensuring that bomb member fewer, we are not nece necessarily limited to catering. We are no more limited to that. We've got the capacity to do just more. In fact, the bill is a little bit bad. Bahai Churi Kupelen Lidnem Bonta, Lerfain, the Sirasa Lebon Senghor, Renalebo Hoy. Now, where we are, the province stand at an average of 41% of women in senior management positions. Cesara Hori, Ha Usheba, the chief the director, the HOD, the uh, department, the chief directors in all the departments, we are at 41%, but we are striving towards 50%. Give 50%. We would want a situation where in the next financial year, Ha Honorable Deputy Chairperson, your National Council of Provinces, Adla, Riberere, we ha have increased from 9% to 50%. And that would then become the task, yeah, all the departments and all the municipalities to ensure that come the next financial year, we register something closer to 50% if it is not 50%, which means if we talk to any senior manager's positions that are still to happen, the focus would have to be women, uh, honorable deputy speaker. Um, we, we must indicate that the province has set aside an amount of 14.0 million rand to find 19 NPOs. And we know that many of these NPOs are women NPOs. Already 10 NPOs have been funded and the first tranche of, of an amount of 1.5 million rand uh, have also been uh, transferred during the third quarter of 2021-2022. This is in order to provide sheltering and containment of victims of gender-based violence and crime at different municipalities in the province. Which gender-based violence we say, in, we in fact, want to fight it our own without necessarily saying, because but we must also call on the Department of Public Safety gender-based violence. But they went single, but they were serious. Because in the main, we have a report because but there are jokes out of that. They make serious jokes out of gender uh, violence. And why should I? Because I know when I get there, it's not going to be nice. That's, it becomes the, another abuse on top of the abuse that you experienced at home. Now we are calling upon the Department of Public Safety. If possible, at least, let there be some kind of a way on how they handle Bombay Baba report and outside just everybody uh, report any other case. Because when we get there, we get the blue eye, you know, already before you wait, it's known that we the Therefore, you see, so we the department and we think uh, from the office of the premier will also have to look at how best can we really ensure that bomb may have a pit little bad chance about an hospital. How about chance about reported these cases because at the main, Okay. Uh, 
Now, furthermore, the province have made available places of safety as a means of addressing gender-based violence. I think Honorable Muilo spoke about that. We have established the Kuseleka one-stop center called Dr. Ruthie Ubuile Gayone. We have the establishment of white doors or safe houses, Koratlou, establishment of state-run safe house, Korastimbeke, which is donated by Anglo-American, which clearly talks to uh, how the district development model uh, is realized because God district development model hore puta botle babanang le matlo le le di project hore re tla go di coordinate sentle at the level of the district mathata a re ntseng re iphilara le mo gona ke hore masipala o mongwe tla be o tswa o yela kwa provincial government department e ngwe tswela e ya kwa go bo go sa bona gale impact in terms of service delivered. And that is why President had to then come up with this model which is adopted and which model is uh, uh, one of the best models. I think Honorable Executive Mayor Maje indicated what we are doing called Dr. Dhrus Sihomuti Mumpati in terms of the, the one plan, yeah, district development uh, model. Now the call that we are making uh, we are all women. We are all women. We need each other. We need each other and we need, we have to work together in ensuring that because I don't know for what reason, but we know for sure that this program, the other programs, selling for the other Halakudi Maspalings are not very different. The talk continue for encourage for what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a mother. Why is it that much as I may not be knowing another woman, but I really need to support that woman politically and otherwise? Arsa Kawangi di Politik, the Patalaza Botuaruna. Simply because Rebata de position it. Arskara di Hanang Ridihanan Ridihanella de position. Because when you see what the lady Billy, Cabo Bonne, sometimes you think you are equal to the task and you get there, you get exposed. You get there or Nanima Tata and Long Tanser Las Hange. Rebona Horozaing, Scopania Ling, Horhunne, Meo represent Ambome, Bailen Hor are down there on the ground and have voted for us as women. Because from where I'm sitting, uh, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker and the Honorable Deputy Chair, women are more, even more capacitated than, we, than men. Ronald Bukhon look with the Bondadim. Kela Hor, we don't want to come out. It's just that we don't want to stand in front and say, I can do it. I can do it even far much better than uh, Honorable Molife. <laughs> Honorable Molife knows that he's getting a very serious challenge from uh, Honorable uh, uh, Nikiwe. Yeah. He, he, he knows that very well. Now we want more of us to be able to do that. You know, Honsatoha Ela Ore. Just gain your confidence. That will strengthen you and you will make it. You will definitely make it. We will in the few coming years out of yourselves be sitting here as women and leading the programs. Some of you being at national level will be priding ourselves that you know when we thought that he's just somewhere, Comrade Petty some, somewhere, uh, Petty somewhere there, and we, so, we see Comrade Petty somewhere at National Aradressa from the television. Thank you very much on behalf of the Premier. We thank you very much for having been part of this session and we wish you all of the best in ensuring that as women, we empower and support each other moving forward. Thank you very much, Deputy Chair. Thank you very much. We are equal to the task. As women, we are equal to the task. Yes, it's just that 
people they elect themselves if if we are supposed to elect one another we will just elect women look look how many we are in this in this venue and there is still 100 uh, more more than 100 in the overflow venue and there are still thousands watching us directly on channel 408 the parliamentary channel i hope they have shown all of you on the tv my ladies we are at, we are now at two o'clock I think we have done very well in terms of time. We will use the last hour just for yourselves. If any one of you want to say anything or want to ask anything, we will use that just for that. There is a mic in the middle. If there is anyone that want to say anything or ask anything, it's, it's our time. All of you, you left the washing, you left the cooking, you left the children. You came here because it's about us. And that is why you are here. So there is the mic in the middle. We don't have to fight. You can just indicate if there is anyone that want to engage. There is one person right at the back. Right at the back. I want you to come first. Yes. I, I don't know who you are looking for because you are at the back. Yes. <laughs> Though the mic is here, they will assist you. Come to the middle, move to the middle, move to the middle. You can also move, you can also move. I saw a hand here. Is it you? Is it you? Now, the two of you, the two of you and her, that is a five for now. Yes. Okay, you are here, it's not, but if I identified you, that is what I don't know. I In Parliament, two questions is three minutes, Fela. My first question is just concerning what I have to say. For the last, I don't know how it is. We are starting with water. Because in the morning, you didn't have water. In the afternoon, there's no water. And during the day, it's From where? From it to say. It to say. To show that there's something wrong with it. There's no problem concerning water. It's only that maybe they, they are losing the valve or whatever they are losing there. Because if someone is coming from head office or whatever, we do have water for the whole day. But during the day, there's no water. Especially a Zoom one that's struggling. Don't allow more than 20 people at a time, please. We and cannot, all of us cannot stand on our feet. It will take long. All right, there's one thing that I'm just asking. Eh? So when uh, Sister, I don't know, Comrade Lebutian was speaking here, we didn't hear anything. Can we just, that presentation of her, be transferred to our, do something about that so that we can get that. Because it was very, very important. It was uh, concerning my local. I thank you all. Sir. Thank you, Beta. Now, ladies, the questions have now shrink to two minutes because you are too much. Can the person that is responsible with the mic just stand at the back so that we get don't get more people that are now on the floor because we will stop for the last person at the end of the row. We said one hour and we can't take more than that. Yes, you may continue. Thank you very much, uh, Jefferson. Uh, firstly, I'm coming from Hasi I'm coming from Mapike, from uh, PWMSA. Um, Chair, one, my name is Hasi Tilekhalatadi. And we appreciate that you always uh, invite us in Parliament and you allow also us to participate, we always join you eventually. We want to send a message to you that you must ask to the president. One, um, we want in the, in the next um, elections, we want to see a minister of finance being a woman. And the reason why we are saying that, Chairperson, it is because we are struggling as a municipality where we have a, a, a funding outside 
a country where we need verification. We are struggling the treasury is not assisting us, including provincial treasury. We are struggling as if we are not thinking beyond MIG and equitable share and um, a, 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 a other source of funding. Um, Lastly, uh, Chairperson, just uh, uh, because of time, we are so disappointed that um, and that Demurule said EPWP is women empowerment. It's an insult. You cannot say 179 women in four districts. We have empowered them in this women empowerment. It is insult for us. And lastly, Chairperson, um, the program, your, Next time you must send a format where all the department must actually say out of their department how many women has been empowered in which project so that we must be able to assess and evaluate the work of each department and all the municipality. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hasi. Thank you, Hasi. But you must remember the one of we can make that proposal of the women for fi Minister of Finance, but the prerogative is still the one of the person that will be the president. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Next. Uh, thank you. My name is Mandy Sambangi from African, South African Women in Dialogue. My, I have a suggestion regarding the gender-based violence because what we have realized is that the department is trying and there are so many awareness campaigns, but it seems as if situations become worse every time. Now, firstly, I think prison should be a place of punishment because perpetrators don't get enough punishment. Secondly, the other thing when it comes to these women killings, it's like we are only covering smoke when the fire is busy burning. So I suggest that why don't we just bring back the death sentence so that everybody knows that whenever he kills a woman or a woman kills a man, will be killed. And Maybe even this rape thing, for it to be reduced, they also need to get a death sentence, or maybe they can even get castrated. That's a suggestion. Serious, serious, serious. We don't say you are not doing enough. We don't say you are not doing enough. You are doing enough. It's just that we are tired. It seems as if the more they go to prison, imagine I'm a taxpayer, somebody rapes my daughter, he gets into prison to eat for me to feed him with three meals. So something must be done. And the, lastly, the other, my other suggestion is in the economic development. We are having this problem of load shady whereby our government is busy buying coal from some companies. We are suggesting that why doesn't the government hire people to mine coal that will make uh, electricity instead of our government buying its own coal? Thank you. Thank you, Sis Madisa. Can I, can I ask you? We, we take all the proposals, but I know we want to appreciate things that we agree with, but we must make sure that the issue of appreciation will not uh, waste our time. Let us just, because I'm giving two minutes, uh, we are getting two minutes in parliament and we say everything that we want to say because we don't use preambles. So you can continue, ma. Introduce yourself, your name, where hey. you are from, and your issue. Keeping Yana Masilo, for Jogora to go at seven, and Nakanaka Hai 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 
le sa le fedile ba ba la me di transport go poso ha ba ya ga ba credit chalete ke mathatela a mantsi go madi bogopane gore le rona ba rekisi ka gore ga na di project re ntse re rekisa go le susen no yela le susa ga le sa le teng ba gole ba mo mathateng le di transport go ya go di toropo ke mathata go mo tsinwe re tswang go gone ya re ne ke re pusho ba gole ba lela ka le susa go madi bogopane go 7 go re tswang teng gore ga ba khona ba ile go di poso go mo bo delere go bo fry ba ke go bo madi bogo poso ya madi bogo yone bile ga ena chalete at all ya no ke ne ke re pusho e le belle ba gole ba rona gore go go rona ga re na ya ni tu se ba go lo gape ka gore ha ba ya ko ba shimana ba ba tla le tshelete ba ba bua ba sa go le tshetsa bone go di 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 ka tsa bone ga di ba di khante ba tla ba thusang ba ba tsetse tshelete amanda thank you sis binyane okay eh ke bo itso go botse ke bo itso go mo gale go tswa go madi be there to the mic okay ke bo itso go mo gale go jana la ke tswa go madi be eh ke rata le bogo opportunity re grilling ka jeko some of the departments re le bogo report tsa lona and some of you re kono bona mmere ko olu wira and we appreciate it more to it ke ra wena mamuilwa re ntse re go bona kana kwa covid mmere ko wira nko mo ntle thata re go bona ntso le pele eh ke na le matsapa reporter yutwile madibeng ga gona report yes we general life the report it's a serious concern cause as women baba ko madibeng le ga o re o batla mmereko ga o tsena o na le vendor number e selengi last for more than 5 6 years you haven't been arrested ever it's a real problem hore ka le ben la gore ta mo di issue tsa education go na le dikolo tse le gore at the moment we are struggling ka issue ya ngwana o seleng a rape wa go skolo and the issue o mo lo mo it's pillar to post o botsa ga go na motho ka go araba so re kopa gore a ko madibeng re kopa thuso gore ga ke ba tlo bua maaka basadi ko madi ben ra sokola basadi ko madi ben we are struggling le khona ya no re ke ya mafa ke bolela yana ke re le ge meeting o o tswa ba ga e tshore kopa go kopana le distractures tse di right gore go bo felong ba le tsatse go kholonna le diphetogo kwa sore la bisi tse ke dintwa tsa dithunya gore ba tla mmere go dintwa mmere go kra ke bontate ka matla go wena mosadi we mella we botse gore wena bana ba go ba yo jang so ne re kopa thuso I I know you are raising serious issues, but we are not going to respond today to that issues. We take it as as queries. Local government is here, provincial government is here. They will listen to your issues, and in the follow up sessions, we will get the report back again. You may continue. Greetings, everyone. Nike Namalebu Mukutwani. I'm from Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. Ke berekela constituency office in JB Marx. Na ke tla ka proposal, mo va proposal because I feel that it can't happen that continuously we have such programs, the workshop or the training di ene ke tla ka mathata gona but there's no implementation. We can't be going to the workshop of the promise of the Tlaga Matata. We come from the branches of the Tlaga Matata and we have leadership and develop them. So I'm proposing that leadership in the Haina Khore, at least we can have um, the committee within our regions, women will tackle the issues on a good branch level because it's very difficult to solve situations, Sabasadi, especially good constraints in Zawana, when we have to meet with the right people because they're never available. We can't limit ourselves to Masfala, Lidi, Kanselara. We as women have a lot of issues that, as committee, we as a, 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 a Northwest can meet. Renali committee, Zawana, for unemployment, the skills program, is a little bit of a thing. Uh, gender based violence bana ba rogo dikologo ba ba setsa dikolo those issues di tlhoka di committee tse di gone go dula and di gone go di solve in a branch level there is no point in coming here to discuss go tlo go bola ko magarona and go tlo go dula gape waiting for the next workshop to happen or the next event to happen with no solutions or implementation i i i clearly said i won't respond but i want to to remind you 
that we had the women's charter review session. And today we are coming back and ask government to give feedback. Is it not part of implementation? It is part of implementation. We are doing it from the side of parliament as oversight. We want to hear from you whether the things that you've heard here from the executive, you are satisfied that you have seen it or that you also, you are telling them that you want to see it. So part of implementation is for us to come back in the fashion that we come back. So we mustn't say no implementation. We must ask parliament to ask the executive to implement. That is what we should do. Yes. Thank you very much and good day, everyone. My name is Nkia Kualitlape from Moses Kodani, a local municipality in Bujanala, sub, um, in Bujanala district. Uh, into the uh, Department of Education and sent my gratitude to say, uh, Mebu Jumelo, when she was talking about career exposure on the same subject, it is there. I can attest to that. Uh, my young girl and boy, they are doing grade seven in Monza Mesa Primary, but attended those classes in um, Monza Mesa, the NS and Tech and Meds. Also, go to say um, the issue of bullying camp. A group will only highlight that. In the whole of uh, the province, in particular Moses Kodani, because uh, bullying is there and uh, it's at a high rate. Uh, also, uh, that the department capacitated our teachers to, 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 to know how to deal with this issue of bullying. To the acting premier to say, we as I said, I'm from Moses Kodani. I'm the ward councillor, a young woman in Moses Kodani. Oh, Now, for Ukari Legata issue Moses Kodani into consideration. Seriously, so radically as I heard you say Namuhoyo Namewak, Kiwisha Horu Gare Harz of an Aragana Literabulu, because Hahona Hopegori and Goteng, and we are affected at what as what councillors, we are there by the community, community expecta who retake a feedback for your community expecta implementation. There's no implementation. And obviously, if um, now, as a young woman, to say, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. You may continue. Dumela, Lina Lara Kina Nashuping, the Jago Greater Town Local Municipality. I'm an author of a book called Misunderstood. Uh, I wrote that book, since, since I want to talk about GBV, I wrote that book because I was raped at 10. Ne? I was raped at 10 and told my mother when I was 41. So um, I'm very emotional in a sense. Uh, I, I, I appreciate, I really do. But if we don't get information in time, talking about us victims and survivors. Ne? In a sense, I might be standing here. You don't know the flashbacks that I have to go through every night. You don't know, you don't know what I what I go through, but you can sit here and talk and take out pamphlets and say GBV this, GBV that. But if we could get enough support in a sense, I still feel even though so I become all cheery. It has affected me, and then I opened. Uh, an NPO called Groom a Child because I was doing this 
this this thing that, that I was doing from my heart, Yahore, I would just go to school, give out sanitary pads without any funding and 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 now also on on that journey, I had to meet by it's, it's, it's tough, it's painful. So uh <sighs> Moreni Mawet, before you start, before you start, let us just on Ishuka, uh, is it Lena shopping? I think this is just an outcry. Sometimes in our communities as women, when girls come to us or women come to us, they have gone through things like rape and so, we tend to be the ones that is very judgmental. I wish I can just touch all of us and begin to make us very supportive of one another because it's very important. It's just, very, I mean, it's very emotional. So I just thought you cannot just let it go like that. You may continue. Um, I'm a young woman leading the young woman desk from at the ANC. I am here coming from a Rustenburg talking on uh, um, touching this issue of yeah, yeah, education. Um, when it comes to education, in, in the sub region to say uh, we need a university. We are waiting up until now we don't have the university. Secondly, coming to the education, I'm coming from the rural area called Velferdin. It's Kolosa Kona, Sivaliwe, the high school. Kids are traveling, going to another village of which a girl child is involved in that. Girls are being raped. We are victims including myself, I once been raped. My case have never been attended to up until this day. Police came, they did what they did, but we are having a challenge with this thing yet in gender-based violence. We are handling issues as young women, as leaders of the young women desk. We meet young people going through the same situation. It's tough to tell them go to the police station. We are even going there to the police station with them. Go back, you'll come tomorrow. Or come or even as you could go and arrest or go and resolve the issues with your boyfriend. People are sitting getting get, 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 get protection orders that are not attended to. People are being arrested. No, after two hours, the, the perpetrator comes back. Now, how are you saying to a girl child, go back, go around and run back to the police? How do you dare tell a young woman who has reported a case and you went there with? Thirdly, I'm out of this thing. I would ask Uti, from the Moses Kotani, we are coming from the village. Which of which, we've been, how long is, is it gonna continue like that? How long will our parents, grandparents, hold it by the man? What about is ditches up? We have bad children. We have operations, but we are still having this challenge, yeah, man. How are we saying we develop our villages? When um salka is lehamba, your commands. Thank you. Thank you, Nwabisa. Um, good afternoon. Um, speak to the mic, please, my dear. Okay, maybe a short. Am I correct? Uh, 
Okay. Oi, meu amor, pela calona. Que vídeo me lhe fati Johnson, o seu alô por Aston Bege, que é um homem das convina. Que tal se mola o guia pelica reportou já com Moses Cotan, já com o Janana, nem lhe reportou com Moses Cotan. Há o guia se pega Aston Bege. Quando lá o guia correu mas a diva se está por ir mining, há que tu correu mas a diva se está por ir mining de rifi. Tá agora na rua por Aston Bege. E agora que me anda também ele de workshop. We've been like the agriculture. Rapla ya rezang, kahon na sepe sepe tuang musula, kahon na kore yang kote. Rente reme pleke ewan, but every day we submit. Every day, kahon mo na it. Number two, kabo jana na kape. Kibo ela le na kilo wana kosi shibito ko Moses kota no what twenty one. Marken na ko rasten beka ko what twelve. Kona le police station ko mabis karan. Kona le police station ko tar star. Kadi bereg. Batu batu harus berhenti untuk batu mai seventy kilos kuaku polis stesen ini, mau graveling, ya, aku nak kan? Okay, thank you to me. You are too serious. It's because of like I'm head. Reporter Ella Kasion. We understand. Reporter Ella Kasion. Ha ha ha, ini siapa? Kuwen ini defend. And then get to work at gender-based violence. Like rata how are you as the province going to eradicate and put a stop to this epidemic? Mama Pana only feel the ideas. So I think my question the ideas Saha Haleta Dula Katona Fatila wanna hurry moving forward to Professor Halam. And then to the Department of Education, Kiluka Lil Naka Pedi Waka take a a girl child to work. To work. Guys, I don't want to be a child. What about my child? Social development, they've got a very, very good program on the boy child. Yes, and we had the questions. Thank you. We had the questions. Thank you. Chimela Mbakolo. Nike na Christmas Okoto under South African Women's in Dialogue from Madibeng Local Municipality Kom Makao. Bakulu Kheru Waka Madibeng Oka Rekai Kepe La Mofaz. Ki a uta di ripoto di atlaka la Madibeng Aona ni moetla fella. Mara metcholo e ira kala kom Madibeng. Kina norodli palamente ba iit. Kore renare a solitiwa. Aona mtana la inta valero na kom mako Madibeng. Ma tata ar na ki amant. I remember when I look at the rape of my I remember when I learned that I love love and about baby about Pila Matal. Yeah, it's a hal. I remember when I learned when I dress a rape of my baby. Yeah, it's a hal. Marafella because in my baby, two rural area municipality, era sarandil and giddy mine. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, it's a little bit. What a whole to say about the And all the councillors said it's a no. Keep on the fella. Here I'm going to live a sad year in my tata kia. Para ay mama wena ay manyan, ay young man ay mama wena ay manyan. But sa nyan na bona sa bona bona para rokoko malam ba malapa as nang banta tapa ba berekang. Ong kaya mo na ay wano mo kanya meru kung kung mai ni para ay mama ay manyan na ay na di qualification. Oto ba di qualification na juang mai ni o sa refidi kudi skills sa fe para para na di skills. So rokoko la la malo na provincia mo yabo ko ni bu piri ma ba kol baruna. Ang kalita di mema di ba? Kona le post ya municipal manager. O cara que estava muito na rápida, mas na leva me, para qualificar o recabo de municipal manager. Bravo, Pache. Bravo, Pabila Real, a Moluna. Thank you, Cristina. The issue is that it it is. Can I come and ask a question? Good afternoon. Please, my dear ladies, we are ladies here, ne? so we will be very poised and quiet like ladies. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm from Rustenberg, Mobujana. Yeah, I'm going to because I will present you at the report. 
I, I, I thought your name is I'm sorry. We are not represented in the district here, Rustenburg. I'm so disappointed in that because we are never uh, 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 represented. And we are not represented in the district but we are not represented in the district. We are not represented in the uh, Councillor Sidi Buaka di Pleke Zavana Runapa, you are not represented. And then there's another issue, Eki Bonimfana, a Department of Social Development. I don't know, but Kukile Ogare, Hagiai Bona, Kineke Sajesta, a child headed household. Because I didn't see it more documenting, maybe it was a uh, if we were in passing, but it's not there because they are supposed to be definitely uh, supported. When I live another tour in Malaba and a Hagia Ugra, it shall see and a limo, this project, the EF and a issue of an a Hagi, Bonili day. So can I give up a hurry? Leona, a gas and more Mokanyemo social development day. Another thing that is a uh, um, it's so imperative for Rogarigan Nathan, the social uh, cohesion, uh, integration. It's so important. People are fighting, people who are from outside. And people need to be educated. South Africa needs to be educated. And also, those immigrant people need to be educated. That's where social cohesion, integration needs to be there. It must be an imbizo, the road shows. People need to come together and we need to listen to each other. And those foreigners, others, they have the right to be in this country. And we don't understand. It's because there's no education. That thing is very important to Garagazaiwa in cognition, deputy, it's there are people with work permits, there are people with exceptional skills, those who are in South Africa, they are not here because is because they have skills. Thank you. Thank you. You must remember, we are here as parliament. Yeah. So the government, the issues will go to the government. And I have now requested the deputy speaker that they must get the report from our staff members so that the legislature of Northwest must follow up on the issues that are being raised here. And I would request from this, from this platform where I'm sitting now, I am requesting the MEC of safety and social development jointly to have an imbizo to address safety issues within the province. I'm asking if they hear me, they must take it further. Yes. Thank you, ma. Kya le boha. Ki dora si jamu holo from down local municipality. Bahaj down ki rural, 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 puo. Dora, I am from Kukumeng, so I know your area. I know it, all of it. Na, kini kita kupa korfunde ne task A fiwang district mayor kwa monitor the local municipality all Dr. RSM because Rene would be here in City Fitile, Rene Rene what transport, Rebecca got special programming, Sakantoro Yaha Meyara, Rene Wale a Timingana, who coordinated the meeting, Riyakova Sadin Kohati, No Yana, Rapalel, because Harina transport, how to put up on Yan, Oya Kukumin Kohabone, Neluka Sahali, Opala. Maka two hundred and vocal. Oh, in your pocket. I know 
gore sensene mer kwa gago wa go monitor di local municipality gore a di gender gender based violence ya performance because thank you dora a registering ya di gender based violence thank you ko pana ni maje Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. You may continue, my dear. Dora, you are on TV. You must remember it. Lina la ke ke ma paseka malchas ke thaka fomo tsingo mungu fawa di RDP mo puso ikile nyaro kupola tenya fawa zaki barona mizi barona rana le machai ti puso ha ANC e ora le boka zaka hadi dini thaka jalo. Make a talk of visa tatamo reporting a tilenka residico. Negana Lidi Potanya Nazem Malo. This sitting it like an abatum in Ohore in the morning. We had a case for a bingo hike in Ohore, Kikarek was Havel over thing because Hans Havatan and Matata was Havel about a bing. So this morning I found myself in a situation in Ohore, Haki, to work in a get on to work at Hatia because Memos are the Hansi and I melanin to visit in Zenyal. Repeat the local one alent that the woman in Ohore on a lady case. Sameda, ona le case tsa go tlhekefatsa bomme. This morning ke ga ile gore o na ke teka molekane wa gagwe mo pele ga bana. Mosadi o utlile a taboga ta bogala go lapenga tse go kopa thu. Jana rona ka go raitse gore ro ke mmolai. Go nne le boketenyana re fihletse le gore itswa letse motho. Gore ano ke ha ke tswala go ntle ke go a papa because o tsena a tshori le botlolo ya biri ano. Ka intention a gore ba tla go betsa papa ka botlolo ya biri ka gore o kila a bola motha mola ka yone botlolo ya biri. Now my question is this uh, ba CGE for in making sure that the report cases say no for a detain the report dealing dinner late closure lady victims that India to see like a in say no for a let's have had to focus it here for one hour the case so they attend you as I am I'm standing here my sister was raped as an senator local school on case you have a custom in what happened as far we have some of the limits hello of my phone is an animal for a can't tell about a million can't tell about a Until the fellows are good about the whole virus, I saw this in the hell I got back his son. So as it is, we wrote a contourna leaf here. Look out some of us try to watch how we're going to get raped because already one of us was raped, was raped. So that's it. So we're going to keep in that as a person saying no more. Residually, because she was dragged out of school. I saw a school room really after my study early three. So it's very painful. Another thing in the case of a boat about CGE, you know, right? Yeah, you need to see the outstanding. Now let me move. Keep on reporting. Yeah, maybe two mil. Maybe two mil are left. We have to report on filling. Yeah, we're not going to tell you. We're not going to give you our social workers down. How to keep going? We're going to keep going. But have you? We had a case. Yeah, we're not going to be able to pull out. Yeah, I pull out because situation is not going to be easy. Monad. Right, we're going to be able to pull out. 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 Social worker can intervene, but not personal when addressing the issues. So, so neke tele wana koka kubi wa lewa ne mo neke re kape ke bota kape kor awareness campaign li dira visible yang because how le yo committing reno re like ifela ka koro ufele lo koro na le phone so di lo tsiru kona kudi bana on social media. So how do you reach uh, the community? Sorry, na tele koro di ko mahai imba na koro they are not exposed to but the social media jalo le jalo. Kefe te ke ko economic development um. But economic development, le intate kumalo malefe. Kitu mese tata kuri le tenga kwa mi. Kona le incident e unwa kape e nakuri idra kete basari e nakuri e rumkristo bosho kutata. Ben baro na or kampana kare bata di baro na bonna karo na our brothers and so on. Ba amuhile dilosa wana sa business mo university haraka nakuri maspala akafita a implementa di bylaws mar adilo di diriwe katela esiame ena ba tovaro na basi kabu kiswa botro in the process of doing that. Thank you. You you don't have time anymore. I give you an extra minute. I, let me just let me just on other issues. If your issue have been raised, it's not necessary to raise it again, because otherwise we will take more time. You 
Yes, no, I will make announcement afterwards. You may continue. Uh, especially from the Department of AI Safety. Some of the programs steady offering if I would workshop the crime prevention programs and then if I like Honali Budi household safety gadgets, Honali Budi Eta Budi debushing. So for community, it's a magic so worried because of your daddy Rahala Momotin Waruna and a do to support who. Especially towards women, because how can we la Mona kunya na efeta inye ibege nya na efeta nzi. How can we do the case se se thoma haning mo elor women ne ba reipiwa ba bolaiwa ene inusabo thoko ene inusudi ne ba na ba banya ne ba banya na like how you were so in the morning today who reported you happy ya 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 me limwana ba elor ba reipi. And the last week, I have been fighting for 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 sixteen years. My Lord, I have been much more worried than oh, oh, Lord, what we? Because no one has suspected or given or the government Lord has given me the harsh show so far. Much more officers were in charge. So until we get support from for, rather than the other hala like from the departments, but support every every by the young community. Like because we are out by a kai kai, but for one hardy one you are saying, there are many community policy program. The whole policy in 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 our water, there are many one community policy program. But people are not self, but they are not safe somewhere because they have few anything to protect themselves. Thank you. Like maybe with the with the. Papa Seka, thank you. Okay, and then also another thing. Yeah. There is nothing. <laughs> there is nothing. No. You should have spoken about that thing. There is nothing. Okay. I've got an I've got an announcement to make. All right. The, but you are finished. Okay. <laughs> Those of you that spoke about the issues about child rape, about gender-based violence, about rape. Those of you that spoke about it now, and that still want to speak about it. There is a director from social development outside. What is the, the surname is Mihwe. She's just outside, right in front of the left area. She want those people to now exit the hall to come to her so that she can take your details and follow up on that issues. Can we begin to go to her now, please? Even even the same lady that was speaking, let her exit the hall and go to the woman outside, because the issues were more or less the same issues. Yourself, you can go outside and speak to, uh, go outside and speak to Bama Hwe. I The one thing that you cannot do to a speaker of parliament, we say, we determine your time to speak and you will speak that time. After that, we won't allow you to speak because we are giving you options. You can speak, Mama. Melamba Muso, Ogwan Faki, Mr. Hodukobe, but a comment on what it took for all that one. Nakanakana for maybe Matataka had to put on a lava to the Haki to Bua Matata and the Hong Kong's Abu. I can alone one now, but the last school of the letter, the electing day. Kahona Divers, or Battle Room 1100. So last month, we met Anastasia at the heart of Yalu, even a pair of hat of Lokile P. Pablo Kilipinian, Akopananamutum of Facebook, Arotam of Blocolella P. I block all that, okay, Gadi Ten. Has all wrapped up. Now, talk at you and discuss in the back of the truth. Copy. I'm to have local Latin, my dear, at least seventeen thousand seven hundred and fifty. Daddy ten. The land, the twelve from the Antamarare, I get a billy, and that well, Baba Copil will go in a space. A girl, Lapun is that thing. 
Kali jual. Hake lah aku ha. Arma mah. Saya tak kahai. Mungkin hari tuan hantar dan cenderam. Kita mufat cerita kerja. Tama uye kopi ini, uye pergi station. Afu ni la enas pas, afu ni la lekcim. Bagi bermara bermara bapa tak kis nama. So aske aye atu meli mutu mutu amara rujuk sama aje. Azan kaya biasa. Mari kita kaya mufat. Mari seko. Yours is a very specific issue. Can you go to the table there so that they take your details so that we can rather help you in that way? Okay. Because it's a very specific issue. Okay, thank yes. you. Go there. Speak. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Dumela, Kinna Masukumunchunyani, Kitha Kaya, Kowat Seven, Kurato, Kwamati Bokopani, Kumutani, Obiduan, Tikunwa. Can you just repeat your name? Masengo Munchunyan. Eh, ishu se pedi se kina ndi chuo neta ncha kito kodi libisa kwa Department of Education. The Department of Education, there are cleaners, there are screeners, the COVID-19 screeners and cleaners kodi kolo. All the new people that is joining the line now, I know where the who was the last person. I know you, I know you were the last person, but you are going to the back, allowing people to come in in front of you. So it's fine. Oh, thank you. Since we have been here for two years, every three months the contract is renewed. Every three months. By that time, we are approaching for 35 years. We really need to know where are we standing with the department. No, we don't get our pay slips. We went on fight the social development because we were found in PESAL, even today, the pay slip is a great And the other issue here, workload. ลีเบอร์เรกาลีลีดีทลีน่าโมสโกลลีลีฟอร์ลีเบอร์เรกาทวินติทลาสิทลาสอดมินบล็อกทลาสเดซาราวด์ดีคิมเมอร์โกลิ
So the, you must remember that the people that must hear this issue, some of them are here. So they hear it and they must follow up on that. Tumela ke non tan tan ni kutoa kuche ibi max doctor K K. Memu ilwa tumela tse reporto kaho and then relevo kila kuba afahate. Hmm. Social development, the go doctor for JB Max, high reachable. I had an event, yeah, JBV against Bogogo, that it did is a match. And then that's whereby Bongkolo will never complain, Hore, have a little social development. But what's a mega gabo, Nahore, a poor high, whereas a poor little for. And remember, Hore, who you're holding qualification in Huyen for social development, the go Bosch. Opalama di taxi tse itre. Opalama kutwa kolikeshi ni ngoye kutropong, otwe tropong, oye dasirand. So imagine for a pension, akwake atze ilis, abile so financially strength, abe itakwa ale kubo kutamiku waka ye. Keko ba, how ka anane la ye umma? Kile bukhele. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Straight into the point. Eh, di mana matu na? Legal. Eh, my name is Muriel Serai. Muriel, not Miriam. Eh, eh. Okay. Muriel. Muriel. Yes, Muriel. Okay, kita mau follow awal. I'm and political. Kita cerita ya, nane. Okay. Kita mau kita mau kita buat something sesi different. Yang kau bantu bantu bawa. Okay, mari lu buat sesi. Okay, lihat awal. Kita mau kau na leton. Ele ya ya kore um kitu kwa isadi kwa European countries ne waisi harika mu major legislature ne kuna lina Chief Act Amendment ele kwa ile yana ka 1937 ne e mu ele kwa o we are all blacks as you know e but gaga Indian white and colored mara kilebele se kwa one harika mu di meeting harin sense ri kapa yama. Sometimes, eh, what I cry, look for Baba, my Baba, my Karateba, more than Yaka, Yaka, Toropo, what seven? Eh, Musmatis, eh, what seven in Tirian? What I want to worry, I am a little bit of 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 when you come to that point, okay, fine. When the end of the day, we are already banned. We are banned by the Russia. You know, now we look at the American troops. Hey, American troops take a war as a liberation. I hear it. Now, you must have heard history. Let's go and look at the Roman Empire. Can you get that history? Hey, we take a war as a liberation. In this way. By by America, the American by 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 too bad the drugs because unemployment. Eh, by by simula the carta the the ink trote wa bondi dinyope. Oche kimon Kenya kodi o senti dira halaka kubo America kakuwa. Same applies. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Miriam. Eh, thank you. How about this? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Muriel watch TV. Muriel is someone that that watch TV. Yes. Really, she's informed of what is happening on the TV. Yes. So we must appreciate that. Thank you. Madam Bakulu, Ogu angona kin na na mukura kuto kora mutsere mura. Speak to the mic too. Okay. Ogu angona kin na na mukura kuto kora mutsere mura watiti. Kanya kaba kolo kia meji. Egaran kai di bisa tata kora malif. Malifer ya thoka kha meji la sotek. Ukila ra ya ko wat ko 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 dinokana li minister. Mere le ka kola ra wala kanya meji. Kefa la kora na kono lo dinokana hara kwa na kubwa rona ba kivam cholo zuko. Lejana maba no kolo zuko vilo matapamutsi na ukipelezo. 
tata remolete ba thoba kwa nga ka ba re fina tata fela le gone wa itse go gongwe ga le gore gona le bothata gore re skara ke ra metsi re tlhoka fela tlhaloso e be le nna le explanation ya gore ra go kira metsi ya o le because it's been two months three months four months re sa kira metsi ke ja ka le dikarolo gona le dissection ya gore ba bangwe le bangwe ba experience ma thata bona metsi mara ga jana gona motho o porutsa le ma khansela ra rona a sotega ka gore ba phela ke gona ba tsana gona jana jana ba tsone tse ba dile ka di ifitsa metsi ba tho ba kwa nga ka khale ba le mo di ofisi ba ba re ka ka metsi ha gona di maintenance motho o tle bogo sa le go tire ha tlo go senye ile velo go kae kae ha gona le motho o le gore ba merekisa gore a yo go bangkanya velo e so ga ni khung ke ya jana ke tle tata ke go kutlwa go gona ra molepe gore to go bo go go lebe go nga ka go le ho rutsi o go bona gore tata ga te bo thata ke eng ka go tata re la pile le gona go tlhola re metse go nna botsini thank you go go tlhola re gona pile re gona thank you nana ke a le mo thank you ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุกคนที่ทุก
ke na le concern e wa ne ya gore we don't really much get help from the cpf structure meaning the cpf ya mafike ke tla ibua ya lo ga re kre ithuso we've got issues said in tsa di drug abuse di di gona le di drug hubs tse di ntsintsi ela ka mo bo golf you and now even now they are using bana ba ba nyane ba ma 12 years under age to sell those drugs because go ka se suspect di but the unfortunate part is that reforma mo ra di bona we report that but nothing is being done re go pa go nne le thuso ba ga ishu thank you thank you honorable honorable members of this very esteemed gathering i think i should go there because i'm speaking now am i audible No. Can I have my speak now? Thank you. We have deliberately allowed for the participants today to raise some of the issues that you have been raising. As Parliament, we've got an oversight responsibility, which means we are on the side of the communities to make sure that our executive implement the issues now i want to start to express our appreciation and thank all of you for your participation in today's event it is our first event of a feedback from the executive to those that participated in the review process of the women's charter and i think one thing that i have observed we don't have to be satisfied with everything that we heard today but one thing that i have observed is that we at least are bringing the executive to think about the issues that was raised by us as the women which means our government will have a better understanding of what we want to see implemented the issues that you have raised is not far fetched some of the issues we know that there is a serious issue of water but we also want our local authorities to think outside of the box they will have meetings and in business with you as to what your contribution can be to make sure that there is sustainable service delivery because there is also a contribution that can come from communities to ensure a sustainable service delivery people doesn't want to hear it that they must pay for services but we need to to discuss that issue but i don't want to go in there because it's not my point it's not my issue the only thing that i want from the executive from the leadership of the councils uh, executive mayors from mecs from premiers from provincial government is to make sure that there is leadership and commitment at the highest level to service delivery for to making sure that we develop and implement a whole government strategy so that we can realize gender equality and mainstreaming it is unnecessary for women to come and stand here to say i can't go to a police station because i won't be taken serious the police men they don't take you serious are your children they are from us we we rear them we brought them up just for them to undermine the very same ends that nurtured them so we need a strategy where everyone is treated equally we also need to develop rational and targeted action plans priorities timelines objectives across the three spheres of government so that we can agree on the program that we are going to implement to make sure that there is equity and equality within society everyone must understand your role and accountability you must understand what it is that we want you to account on and that we will do oversight on and we will not stop continuing 
the members of the executive council, as well as our mayor, we already, I spoke to the deputy speaker, I said, please take note of each and every issue that are raised here so that you take the responsibility from the side of the legislature to call the relevant people to account. Local authorities, district uh, mayors, as well as provincial executives. We will call them to account at a national level. We will make sure that they begin to respond just two weeks ago on the 6th of May, we had a state capacity workshop for the press from the presidency up to COCTA. And we called academics in and we asked them to tell us, what are you planning to make sure that you coordinate service delivery so that our people can get a better deal? We had it on the 6th of May. We, and it was a very good session, I should say, because we could see, I personally could see where the problem lies. And it is in coordination. So the district development model, if implemented successfully, it will address that issue, Honorable Executive Mayor. Because then we will have coordination. All the money will come to one point and implementation of services will take place from that specific point. That is, we need to coordinate our effort because everyone working in the silos and come back to say, we don't have enough resources, we don't have enough money. But imagine if all the monies was pooled and we decide for this financial year, all the areas of, 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 of struggle or of complaint from our people in Ngaka Modiri Mulema are going to be addressed. And we address that. I'm speaking about the province. From there, Ruth, uh, uh, Dr. RSM, particularly Greater Taung, people I worked there in November, I never finished working. And I still had to go to Amalia. I still had to go to Bray. I still had to go to Likwatimana. I'm supposed to go to Likwatimana as my constituency area. I could uh, never almost reach there because I started from, what is, what is the area where Taungskal is? I started from Baxtin up to Kukuming. That three words there. I, I was all over in Greater Taung. And the way that area is still underdeveloped, it's unbelievable. And we, ca we came from, what is the other area with the English name, where there was no water? Not riots, with the English name. No, we went through Taung, that side. Where the chief is, the, is blind, that blind man. To Mara Gloss, Mara Jerakenoki, Radial, that Ekamasi Fandar, Ekas van Appinton Mensa, so Ekani Aldi Nama Ondoni. But this place have got an English name. Myra, that is the place where I went. So I went to Myra. People came there, they put water tanks there. Since the water tanks came in 2020, 2021, when I got there, there was never a drop of water that went into that water tank. I mean, it is impossible that we cannot deliver such a basic, such a basic service. And I think if we have a better coordination of our service delivery, we will be able to address it. So I want to say to the provincial government and to the local government, districts and local authorities, your biggest challenge is inspiring confidence in the people that you serve. We have the responsibility to rise above limitations and help our people to shape a future that they desire for themselves and their families. Everyone that came here, most of the people that came here that stood up and spoke said, we are speaking about women and children because women and children are the ones that are suffering the most in these areas. And I said it before, 
if there is no water, who is the one that must go and fetch water? Someone came here and said, for how long must our mothers go out and carry the buckets on their heads? And it's a very simple solution. Let us get together, pull our resources, and make sure that we begin to respond to the issues of our people. As parliament, as a legislature, we will continue doing oversight. On behalf of the Women's Charter, we will continue to come back to provinces, and we will also work with the uh, provincial legislature to actually begin to make sure they arrange the same kind of sessions for the executive to be able to report back to you as the interested parties. It's very important. Let me conclude by thanking everyone that participated in today's session. You are empowering us. You will never know how much you are empowering us. You are empowering us to be able to keep the executive accountable for the issues that is important for the women of South Africa. Particularly Bokona Bopirima. I mean, always when I'm, I mean, it's my province, what can I do? Always when I'm here, I feel that you are very serious about yourselves. And I love that. Because if you don't take yourself serious, no one will take you serious. And it's time that we as, as women begin to keep our government accountable so that they can take us serious. So thank you very much. In spite of the weather, in spite of everything you are here, I know most of us doesn't go out usually. And it's a very lekker outing today. But what I love is the discipline and the participation. You didn't come here to come to town. You come here to participate in issues that is important for you. That is the thing. I want to express my appreciation to the legislature, particularly the speaker, the deputy speaker, the secretary to the legislature. He was extremely helpful in making sure that we arrange this, pro this program. On the, the project team of parliament, all the stuff up to drivers that came to Mafiking, I think I'm bringing them out of Cape Town so that they can see the world, isn't it? And bringing them out of Cape Town. They are here, they have served you, they have transported you. We appreciate them. Thank you for that. Also the progress of women's movement of South Africa, particularly the Northwest chapter, as well as Pilile. That, I mean, it is the, the, the effort of the PWMSA together with parliament and other women's formations that brought you here. And we want to express our appreciation for that. We want really, from the office of the premier, Ntombi, Komani, and all of them, they did a lot to make sure that this become a success. We want to express our appreciation to them also. The deputy speaker, the two MECs that are present here, the mayors and councillors, as well as the senior managers of departments. And you didn't spare any effort to make sure that you prepare the inputs and come and present it. You know, sometimes you can come with a presentation and find people extremely hostile to your presentation. But fortunately for all of you, this is peace loving people and they are serious about themselves. And we want to express our appreciation. Even the MPLs that are present here. To the MPs, there were all the, almost all the MPs from Northwest deployed to the NCOP, from the DA, the EFF, and the ANC. They were on the platform. And we, we, we must mention that, because sometimes our provinces say, we never see you again. We sent you to Cape Town, we never see you again. We want to say all the parties, they were on the platform and we appreciate that. We really appreciate that. I hope I have said a word of thank to the office of the deputy chairperson. People, without Sibulelo and the team, I don't know whether we would have a women's charter. So why do you want me to mention you specifically? <laughs> Who's there? Huh? Who is there? 
Didn't I say the team of parliament? Are you not part of our project team? Don't be jealous if I say to my office a special thing. Jealous down. The office of the deputy chairperson is in charge of this program. Yes, man. But I must say that parliament, the project team of parliament, people, it's just that we don't give people enough work. Then we say they get big salaries and they are not working. I make them work. You can see they are from Cape Town to Northwest. And from here, they are going to Limpopo. They will not even see Cape Town in two weeks' time. They must go to Limpopo because we are going there. There is someone that I really, really want to. I want to thank her. She's not from Northwest. She's, she's in Parliament. I think she's from Pumalanga, but she's deployed with me to the Northwest. But not because she's here today on the platform. She's always supporting our programs. Masiwela, thank you very much for always supporting us. She's on the platform. To our partners, you are not less important because we are mentioning you last. That is the Commission on Gender Equality, as well as the FFC. Usually States SA is part of our programs, but today for this, for this event, it was not necessary to invite them. We just wanted to invite those that can give feedback on the issues. We want to express our appreciation to the sound people as part of the project team. I must mention Ms. Shelley. I want people to see that woman. It is the one that when you hear us in 408 say, put your head like that and put your hand like that. Shift your phone like that. Shelly, can you please, me? can the people see you? You are from Northwest, take off that mask. Take off that mask. <laughs> Do you see that is the voice that you hear when we prepare for the settings? <laughs> it, it's only the NCO people that allows her to shift us <laughs> like this. But we appreciate people there are many people that are committed to make a difference. And I think the team of you that came here to attend on behalf of the whole of the women of Northwest, all of us must give you a round of applause for that. And uh, I don't care, I will sing for you. Let me sing for you. Basari, 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 bella. Basadi 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 fella Io 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 Bomme 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 fella not mentioned know that we appreciate you and no one must live here if they haven't even give you a glass of cold water I think Sebo want to Sebo want to make announcement to that effect once again thank you very much just a quick announcement Okay.